go. Alright. The Hebrew Israelites come out of the weak prophesied a downfall of this wicked country known as America. Prophesied a destruction of two thirds of our wicked people, which is the nation of Israel, which consists of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. He come to prophesy the future enslavement of the rest of the nations, which do not consist of the Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. And most importantly, we come out here to lift up the banner in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, which is the true name of the Father and His Son, and to wake up the elect of the nation of Israel, which is the one third, which is the Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans only. So with that, we'd like to give all praises, glory, and honor to the Lord by Jimmy on side. Double honors to the elders of Jim Leonard that rule well, that, that uh, diligently search out the truth, man, and bring it to the forefront like no other people have done. And to all the brothers out there throughout the four corners of the world that follow his suit after the elders through the spirit of Yahweh Shai pushing his truth out. And that's sincere in this thing, man. And diligent and that's enduring to the end. It's not falling out by the wayside. Uh, second answer is nine, nine and one. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time where the highest will begin to live the world which he made. Boston bombing, it's, you know, countless brothers that you know, but that Boston bombing is a sign, man. You know, they try to use it as a, a terrorist threat call, man. Everybody knows, man, who's in the know that that shit is set up. All that shit is inside the clouds, man, just like 9-11, man, just like the Oklahoma City, man. Just like all these mass public shootings, man. That's all set up, man. What they gonna do is they gonna start taking away your gun rights, man. They're gonna take away that second amendment. And listen, it's gone already anyway, but they wanna let you know without just uh, cold turkey doing it, you know? They wanna take it away without, without it being just overnight. But it's already gone. And along with that, man, they gonna start imposing new laws New legislations to take away more of your freedom, man. They gonna start. They gonna start tapping more of your cause, man. Being more open with tapping. They gonna start being more open with having these drones flying around, surveilling the so-called citizens. They gonna start bringing all this to the forefront, man. This government is, is really about to start moving on you, on you sheep a lot more, man. This devil's about to start showing his horns, man. <laughs> California for the drones. California for the drones. As well as uh, Boston, you know what I'm saying? Boston, uh, the key for drones. Yes. Because of the boxes, it'd be easier to, 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 to monitor, to correct. When they say correct, they're talking about to be able to build a hard uh, robot airplane, basically, that shoot down. You can destroy some shit. And they don't mean correct, man. Just like that one movie, uh, uh, Minority Report, man. They wasn't correct or nothing, man. It was so-called preventing the things from happening, but it never happened. How can you judge or something you did it? That's what the drones are going to be doing. They're going to be killing them up. Even if it was a so-called terrorist, man, they're going to kill their ass before they even got caught in the act of doing it. But all that shit is set up, man. You know if it was set up, because they had, uh, it was having the bomb practice, was it the bomb scare practice, drills and shit that day, man. But yeah, you wasn't ready for the actual event to happen. Not only that, bombs were set up on the, on the address that was 666, man. If this devil ain't showing signs, man, that's how the devil operates, man. He got to make all his sacrifices through, through, through witchcraft, man. That's right. It gotta be through witchcraft, and one of the one of the main witchcrafts, man, is numerology, man. But see, our people they don't, they don't pay attention to shit like that. Our people like being docile and simple, man. Simple niggas walking around. 
Just like the scriptures say, man, the deceiving and the deceiver are his, man. Yep. For all you church going people out here, man, y'all being deceived by these fake ass pastors, man. Hey, you in the same handbag with that pastor, man. Right. You're gonna get the same depth. Just like people who's waking up knowing they Israelites, man, following these false ass prophets, man, you're gonna receive the same death and judgment that they're gonna receive. Right. Says, uh, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And are you not hearing of wars and rumors of wars, man? Are we not hearing the rumors of World War III? Are we not hearing the rumors uh, of wars with uh, North Korea and South Korea and America? Y'all people don't know what the fuck is, what, what time it is out here? Y'all don't know what's going on? I was going to say, yeah, Vladimir Putin, he's going back to that old spirit, just like uh, Kim Jong-un uh, is doing. He's going back to that old spirit that they had, uh, not giving a damn about who America thought they were. <laughs> About, about about the division away from this white man because he bringing them but deception. That's what a devil does. That's what the word devil means, to deceive, to be deceiver. That's what he's bringing. They, they, their eyes, all the other countries, everybody's eyes but American eyes are, are, uh, are, are, are open to see what this devil's doing. Everybody but our people. Their, their own people know the agenda that they're pushing. This white man ain't bringing nothing but, but trouble to us. They ain't bringing nothing but, but more problems, more laws against us, more to keep us away from the power of the, of the heavenly Father. And, and you said here, wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. Hey, so that's why, men of the Lord, man, we rejoice when we see those signs, man. And we heard about the Boston City bombing, man. We rejoice, man. That's another sign of the time, man. When we hear about all these uh, public shootings, man, we rejoice. When we hear about natural disasters, man, we rejoice, man. Those are all signs that this place is about to fall, man. And, and to add on those natural disasters, that's that's really the power of this time. A lot of, a lot of natural stuff going on. China being crushed. Bangladesh people getting just another earthquake, man. China, Bangladesh, the the, uh, the river, the Mississippi River, all of Illinois, and all those rivers up there are all of a sudden. Just, I mean, I seen one up to the, to the stop sign. I mean, come on now. I mean, this is clearly the time of the end. All this destruction happening, and a lot of it's natural disaster. So you know that it's the Most High doing it. That it's not just uh, you know, just some crazy bomber out there. Just Al Qaeda or whoever out there. It's a lot of natural stuff of people dying. It's a time of death right now. And if you ain't if you ain't woken up to the spirit of death out here, you can lose your life like that out here. Then then you gonna then you gonna get caught up in that death. Outside of open up your eyes to And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right. So all these things got to come to pass, man, for the end to come. All these things, hey, the RFID chip is out, man, so the mark of the beast came to pass, man. Right. Now we waiting on World War III martial law and these race wars, man. We waiting on this famine, we waiting on these, on these uh, diseases to start flooding the earth, man. Right. Those are some more prophecies that got to be fulfilled, man. But that major prophecy, man, is going to be World War III. Once World War III kicks off, man, the America's destruction is there. Man. And America just realized that, that, that all the uh, North Korea was talking so much shit 
Texas is so affected. Uh, um, Iran talking so much shit, but they have to say something back. They have to like say something. People start to look at Obama like he ain't like a fucking faggot. Even though he really is. But they look at him like he ain't like Bush. At least Bush had balls. He went up there and talked shit back to these other nations that were doing something. You know? It says, for, it says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places, man. That's all we see. And that's all that's going on right now. Wars, rumors of wars, diseases coming out, man. Uh, uh, famines, food shortages, man. And earthquakes in diverse places. Y'all don't pay attention to the news, man. Y'all don't pay attention to world news at least, man. If y'all watch the news, y'all watch y'all local TV bullshit, man. Which don't tell you not a goddamn thing. All these are the beginning of sorrow. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Second Ezra, nine and three. And he's just about to reiterate what Jehovah Shai was telling the disciples, man. Right. Therefore, when thou see, shall be, uh, therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. That's right. So that's another thing, man. Uproars of people in the world, man. You having cla uh, uh, not class wars going on, man, but you having austerity uh, uh, uprisings going on, man. All these budget cuts, man. These countries about to go bankrupt. Pigs. Portugal, Portugal, Italy, Portugal, Italy, was it Ireland, Greece, and Spain, man? The, the, the miry clay? Hey, man, they have an upwards to the people, man. They've been having upwards to the people for years, man. They were pushing them austerity, man. Yeah, but one thing, America's about to start seeing that upwards. Once, uh, once China probably uh, liquidate all America's debt, man, and that dollar collapse, that, 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 Fiat, American dollar that these simple ass niggas love so much collapse, man. These niggas gonna start killing themselves. They gonna start rising up in the streets, man. It's gonna be uproars of people out here in America. That's right. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee. Right, man. Hey, and that, and that, the time that Jehovah Shai spoke that, man, that was before us, man. I was over 2,000, going on 3,000 years ago, man. We're going on the third day right now. Uh, even from the beginning. Even from the beginning, because the end was made manifest since the beginning, man. Since the foundation of this universe was laid, man, the destruction of America and the destruction of the wicked, man, was made manifest. That's right. For like as all that is, in the, that is made in the world at the beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. That's right, man. The end is being made manifest right now through all these signs, man. Even so, the times also of the highest have claimed beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and signs and effects and signs. That's right. So when the end of the when, when the end when the most high is bringing the end of this kingdom down, man, he's gonna show it in wonders and signs, man. Right. He's gonna show it through signs of destruction, man. Earthquakes. He's gonna show it in signs of the heaven, man. Solar eclipses, lunar eclipses, man. Blood moon. He's gonna show it in mass animal comets, comets man. Like, comets, the, like the comet that just went down in, uh, at, in the middle of the concert at, uh, in Argentina. Lift the whole sky up in the middle of the night. And it'll look like daytime, yeah. It'll look like daytime. For a split second. We just had a bunch of comets, man. We went on the streak of chariots. Chariot sightings are more frequent, and those are UFOs. UFO sightings are more frequent than, than you would believe nowadays. Especially over there in the uh, South America, man. Because that's where, that's Lord Willem, that's where the great deliverance is going to be at, man. That's going to be the second wilderness. Uh, 8 and 61. Therefore, it's, it's the second entrance, 8 and 61. It says, Therefore is my judgment now at hand. That's right, so the most high's judgment is now at hand, man. That means you simple ass niggas better get your shit right, man. Y'all better get your act together. Come back to the Heavenly Father, man. Worship him in his true name, in his son's true name. Come back to your heritage and start following these laws like you're supposed to, man. To the best of your ability, man. 
not only that, man, get out here and teach your people, man. Get out here and call for the elect, man. Get out here and fish, man. So these things have I not shown unto all men, but unto thee. So Most High didn't open all men's eyes up and ears up to receive this, man. Only the men of the Lord, namely only the elect, man. But the men of the Lord, I say that because many are called, but few are chosen, man. There's only a few of elect, man. There's going to be a lot of prophets out here that, that still has this understanding. But unto thee, and a few like thee, and a few like thee. Then answered I and said, Behold, O Lord, uh, now hast thou showed me the multitude of the wonders which thou wilt begin to do in the last times. But at what time? And, that, and that's when it goes on to measure it out of time diligently within itself. You can go back to uh, seven. Uh, seven. Seven. So, and everyone that shall be saved. And this is uh, 2 Ezra 9 and 7. So like this. 2 Ezra 9, 9 and 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. That's right. So it said, everyone that shall be saved shall be able to escape by his works and faith. The works is the law, man. The works is coming out here prophesying. But through pursuing that, man, through fulfilling the law and coming out here prophesying, you showing your faith, man. That's right. That's how you show that you got faith in the most high, man. By coming out here on these streets, man, and teaching. Not giving a fuck what anybody got to say, man. Not caring what type of tribulation you're going to go through. Not caring about if you're going to be labeled as terrorists, man. Not caring about if you're going to get arrested, man, for the message that you're pushing. I got a quick piece of uh, Romans 3 and 3 and 3. For, for what if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? That's right, man. So what if it? And we can't even say what if some do not believe, man, because the majority of our people don't believe what we say, right? right. Two-thirds don't. But that, is that going to make our faith of none effect, man? Is that going to make our faith that this place is about to be destroyed not not let this place be destroyed, man, because they don't believe? What? God forbid. Yahweh forbid, man. Right. Yahweh spoken into existence that this place was going to be destroyed, that he was going to deliver the elect, man, that he was going to put the elect and the nation of Israel back in that power seat in that rulership position as the kings of the earth, man. And that's what he's going to do, man. Right. Because the Most High is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. So, so yea, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar. That's right, man. So if a man tell you, man, that America's going to go on another 10, 20 years from now, that man is more than likely a liar, man. Because the signs of the times show that we right at the end, man. I don't even believe we have two more years back in this thing. I'm going to be pissed off if we got two more years back in this thing, man. Y'all yeah, don't catch it. We ain't here longer than that. Man, if we here in two years, man, just think how much hell you niggas is going to be catching. Man. Watch how fast you tough-ass niggas going to start folding the fuck up like this. Man. If we still out here, what? We still out here, uh, able to teach two years from now. We gonna be on your head, man. We gonna, the most high spirit gonna be on your on your head. We gonna be head hunting. You out of up your left, or you gonna get spiritually chopped up. We already doing that, but it's gonna be even worse. We ain't gonna try. We ain't gonna be in here out here trying to bring in uh, uh, fruit like that. The fruit gonna just come. They just gonna flock to it by that point. Everybody that ain't flocking to it is gonna get chopped down. And condemn. Yeah. Can we finish that off real quick? It says, uh, as it is written, this is back in the uh, Romans, it says, as it is written, uh, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. That's right, man. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go back and read that seven. It says, uh, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith where, whereby ye have believed. And that's and that's exactly what it was saying right there and there. You know, so that you might overcome when thou art judged, meaning you will be saved. You'll be, you'll be judged righteous to be saved by your faith and by your works. You know, they go hand in hand. It says, uh, shall, and eight now, it's going to be back in eight. It says, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land. That's right, man, because the elect, man, the majority of the elect, the ones who, who's not, whose lot is not to get put to death, man, 
and be the first to rise back up at the second coming of Yahweh Shine, man. The rest of the elect who's going to be saved alive, man, those are the ones who's going to be saved from that famine, man. Right. Those are the ones who's going to be saved from the nuclear destruction, man. From, from the pestilence, from the martial law and concentration camps, from the race wars. <laughs> really, man, I believe the elect is going to be saved from the race wars, pestilences, and, and the famines, period, man. If any of the elect get put to death, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be through the martial law, man. Through getting tortured while they being tried to, to receive that chip, man. That's to right. receive that mark. Says, so uh, and within my borders, yeah, let me start with A again. It says, shall be, shall, be preser said, uh, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. That's right, right sir. Yeah. So the Most High sanctified his prophets, man. He sanctified his elect from the beginning, man. Because his elect was with Jehovah Shai, man. The person that these worlds, this world, bring you to Jesus Christ. During the creations of the world, man. Right. During the creations of the universe. Who do you think Jehovah Shai was talking to when he said, let us make man in our image, man? He was talking to the elect. Right. He was talking to the 144,000. And let me say, because the, <coughs> the church will tell you that that was the most high God saying that. Then who was he talking to? If it was the most high God, who was he talking to? And what image was that he was talking about? Yeah. Even though the most high does have an image, who was he talking to? Because he, he all he had to do, and the church said that a lot of you, you take the uh, church listen to. When God made me, he broke the mold and he stopped finished off. When God made woman, he, that ain't how it went down. When he, after he made the elect, after he made Yahweh Shai, that's when he stopped making everybody else and allow Yahweh Shai and everybody else to um, to make the rest of the world in those in those seven days. You know, that's what happened at, at that. And the precept was uh, Jeremiah one and five. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb. I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Yeah, so before the elect, man, before the prophets of now and the prophets of old ever even came out the womb, man, we were sanctified, man. That's why when, uh, uh, that's why when uh, the one dude, uh, the one scoffer asked uh, the brother Amishabala out of Texas, like, uh, uh, what do you say, what do you ask him, when were you saved, I believe? Yeah. And he was like, well, I'm shop all the responding, this is out the womb. Yeah. Sanctified since I was out the womb, man. Because before we even came out the womb, man, we were sanctified, man, through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh right. Shai so sanctified us and ordained us to come out here and condemn, man. To come out here and, and further assist in waking up for the elect. Right. Second just says, uh, then, that second letter is 9 and 9, then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away, despitefully shall dwell in torments. That's right, man, they have them. It says, uh, then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. That's right, man, they shall be in pitiful case, man, that have, which have now abused my ways, man. Those who turned away from, them, from hearing the words of the Heavenly Father, man. Those when they had the liberty to do just, man, and to be right, abused that liberty, man, and didn't do it. Yeah. It says, um, and, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. That's right, man. You're going to dwell in torments, man. You're going to dwell in concentration camp torments. You're going to dwell in solidarity and hungriness, man, and pitch black. You, you women, you're going to... You women is is it's just done for you women. There's no need to get on you bitches, man. You ain't got a man. It's a, done. A, a, done. a righteous man. Yeah, you done. Period. Let me get this right quick uh, in the in the curses. This is uh, Deuteronomy 28, and I'm gonna um, start at 28 and one. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe to do all His commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. 
and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power. That's right, man. So if you disobey the word of the Most High, man, you ain't trying to follow these laws. Why you think our people living in curses, man? Right. Why you think our people have to go into slavery under this goddamn white man? Why you think our people is living in the ghettos, living in slums, living in poverty, man? Killing each other, having to be drug dealers, having wicked ass women. Eating un 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 nutritious food. Yeah, un un nutritious food. Yeah, man, eating poison, man. Because our people did what? Turn their ear away from hearing the law, man. But if you listen to the law of the Most High, we were, we were supposed to be blessed, man. We were supposed to be forever in rulership of this world, man. You had a, now jump down to 28 and, and 15. That's why the elect in the next kingdom to come are going to be the rulers, man. Because those are the ones on this side who tried the best of their ability to follow the laws of the Heavenly Father, man. It says uh, Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe to Salah. If thou will, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right. And that's all the stuff that we're going through now. If you don't believe that you're, that you're living a cursed life, or that you're not, in it, or if you're not living the cursed life, you might want to see if you be in the faith. You might want to go back in your, in your uh, genealogy and find out what's, what's really going on in your family tree. Because right? it may not lead back to the children of God. You know? Or, or either way, it might be a good idea to just go back and to see how far back you go back to the nearest man. You know, your, your father or your grandfather or, you know, or your great grandfather. See how far back your lineage go. Because if you if you're a so-called white person and you're going through these curses, you might be a Jake. But if you if you if you look, if you think you're black or, or you know, whatever Jake calls themselves, and you ain't going through these curses, you might want to go back and find out how far your genealogy go back. Because you might, it might go back to a different nation. Lady? Lady Kravitz? <laughs> right. Yeah, there's all kinds of curses in here. Anyway. Go back and uh just for you says uh ten, this is uh second edge ten and nine and ten. Second edge is nine and ten. For such as in the in their life have received benefits and have not known me. <laughs> right man, hey you see all these people man who's living in the world man, they up here if they ain't living like the richest white man, they still living comfortable enough for their ass and not believe that they living in a curse, man. Right. They able to pay their rent on time, man. They able to have nice cars, nice things, nice clothes, man. They able to have this fiat currency in their pocket to, to spend lavishly, man. But those, they still receive benefits without even knowing the most high, man. That shows you that just like the scriptures say, man, the sun shines it down upon the most high, uh, uh, the Most High Son signs down upon the wicked and the righteous, man. Right. Both good and evil. Right. Says, uh, and they that have loved my law, while they yet had liberty, That's right, man. Mm -hmm. and yet, and when, and when, as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. That's right. So hey. You could, you could live nice, man, in this life right here, man. But because you wanted to be rebellious, because you didn't want to follow the Most High's laws, man, because you didn't want to listen to the prophets, and they were out here trying to warn you about the things to come, man, you're going to know the Most High's judgment through death by pain, man. Right. Not natural death, man. It's going to be a painful death, man. Uh, this is uh, Wisdom of Solomon. I'm going to start up at 9. Uh, 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 three and nine. What's the Solomon three and nine? Uh, they that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he that care for his elect. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. Right, so it says the ungodly shall be punished for their own imagination, man. Hey, a good way to describe that. Then you fear the most, that's what the most high is going to use against you, man. Oh, yeah. You're afraid of getting raped, nigga, you're going to get raped, man. 
afraid of snakes, you gonna get destroyed. You gonna get destroyed. You gonna fall into a den of ass. You know. You know. You're afraid of uh, uh, seeing your baby get killed, man. Your baby's gonna get tortured and killed right in front of you, man. That's right. You afraid of the dark? It's gonna be gross darkness out there. Yeah. You afraid of getting eaten by an animal? And afraid of the dark? Bad <laughs> animal. Animals can see in the dark, man. And, and these zoos, they, oh, them animals gonna break out of these zoos. Yeah. Just so you know. All the ones that's in the wild, they're going to come down to eat also. Or you're going to try to run up to a skeptic and run into them up in, up in the mountains or in the wild. Let me see. Uh, for who, like, for whoso despiseth wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is in vain. Their labors unfruitful, and their works are profitable. Let me say this thing. All y'all that's out here seeking this money and seeking big rims, and seeking this dollar bill, that y'all, that's just to cover up the fact that you're not happy. You won't find happiness outside doing what the Most High has you doing in these scriptures. That's the only way that you're going to find any kind of peace or happiness in this place right now. And, and, and then what's, what's cold-blooded about it, yeah, it'll be a lot better if you're, if you're a Jake going into the kingdom, but you're still going to have shame on you. You're still going to have shame on you. The only way to not have no shame and to be completely uh, happy to be blameless is to is to be out here doing the, the work of the righteous man, the work the, the will of the Most High, out here teaching and trying to wake up the elect to get up, to get up out of this place, to usher in the true heavenly Father and the, and the, and the Lord. Okay, uh, nine or ten? Uh, God. So, I've that they that put their trust in Him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints. And he that hath care for his elect. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations. Which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. And their hope is in vain. Hey, hey. And all, all you people's hope is in vain, man. It's right. like my uh, my wicked ass son's mom, man. This bitch really think that this place is gonna continue long enough for her ass to go to school, <laughs> get certified in some shit, and open a fucking business, man. All your hope is in vain, you dumbass bitch. <laughs> all that shit is fucking in vain, man. You ain't even gonna get to the second semester of your school, man, before this shit hits the fan, man. Right. You probably ain't even gonna be able to enroll in school before the most high had his government cut all these little financial assistance programs, man. Student loans and financial aid, man. All your hope is in vain, man. If you're looking for this place to continue, you got vain hope, man. Your hope is supposed to be in the most high and his son only and being delivered out of this thing, man. That's where your hope is supposed to be at. The hope, the treasure is supposed to be set in heaven, man, not, in, right. not on earth. So that means like a, a diploma, or a college graduation, or any of that shit is unprofitable to you. What's profitable to you is, these, is, is following these statutes of the commandments and getting the wisdom and knowledge and understanding out of the scriptures. That's the only uh, uh, righteous uh, uh, knowledge out there. The only, only, only riches that you should be set upon. You know, if you ain't out here trying to, trying to, trying to follow these dietary laws, trying to figure out how to, how to use these special herbs, as a, as a defense, immune, def uh, immune defense for you, or to, uh, to um, like you said, to, um, to, to give your body true nutrition, because this food ain't giving it to you. To get true nutrition out of this food, that's, and give your body real nutrition, that's how you really do it. That's, how, that, that's the real wisdom of knowledge. Not because somebody stamped on your thing, oh, he's been through the courses, for, for two and a half years, and he now has a bachelor's degree. Or he, he went six years, got a master's degree. That's not a master's degree. You should be trying to master these scriptures. Because right. that same dollar bill you're thinking that, that that certificate is gonna give you, is gonna give you nothing but something else to burn when there's nothing else. Something when there's no heat. Ass, something to wipe your ass with. Yeah, later on, that's all that's it's gonna be shit. good for. Because they ain't teaching you nothing that you can use in the world. They're teaching you how to deal with the bullshit of these corporations and these other uh, the so-called white man's laws. That's all it's teaching you. But when you come back to these statutes, laws, and commandments, they're teaching you everything. It's teaching you how to treat one another. It's teaching you how to um, how to treat your women and how to provide for them. It's teaching you how to treat yourself. How to treat the land. How to treat the land. 
how to treat your slaves, how to, <laughs> how to treat your slaves. <laughs> and that, that sounds funny, but you ain't supposed to work them seven days a week, only six. You gotta let them rest. <laughs> they gotta have rest so they working good for you. You know? How your, how your slave gonna build up your shit with no energy? Right. You gotta, you gotta, and, you, and, and those that work for you, you know, you're supposed to pay them according. Yeah. Those that work for you. Yeah, hired servants. Yeah, you're supposed to pay them according. You ain't supposed to, like, y'all think y'all hire servants out here uh, that got these regular old jobs, but y'all ain't getting paid what you're really worth. You ain't even getting paid the same day like you're supposed to get paid. You're supposed to get paid that day. You gotta wait for your check a week or two weeks later, man. Then you gotta go through a whole like, nah, nah. You gotta go through a whole nother system of getting your, te your check cash that they gonna take something back from. Yeah, God. Then you ain't supposed to be tax usury, man. No. You motherfuckers, y'all yeah, happy with paying to go to work, man. Yeah, paying to go to work. Y'all paid to work. You, you pay gas or, or transportation to get to work. They take taxes from you after you work and you don't get your money on time. And then they, they study looking for ways to take the money back from you. They say, oh, you put it into your uh, social security that you may not even live to see. And they cutting all that too. They cutting it all. You ain't getting none of it. They keeping it. As a matter of fact, while I'm speaking on it, in Cyprus, it's the banks of Cyprus have actually just, just been on a bank holiday. If you don't know what a bank holiday is, don't Google it. Find out what they just did. They just took the people's money. They literally robbed the people in Cyprus. And that's coming to America. They froze the banks where you can't get nothing out. And then when, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, they basically froze all the bank accounts, man. That way uh, uh, they could get that bill out. So the country wasn't going to pay for it. Then right after that, you had hella bank runs out here in America, man. Yeah. Mainly with Chase, JP Morgan, man. One of the Banking families. Right. Because they're one of the banking families in the world, and that affects you. Yeah, that's animals ain't playing no more either, man. These animals are spiritual nowadays. I've yet to see a, a, an animal walk up to a camp and have a problem. You love being at the camp when animals walk past. But with some of these demons that be out here, you see they part of the way right there, too, right? Dog, man. To the spiritual out here. This, this is spiritual out here. But back into the, the, the Cypress thing, the bank just straight robbed people. If you had over $100,000 in your bank account, they took 60%. And they're taking a percentage out of the other people's uh, accounts as well. No matter how much you got. And there's nothing you can do about it. And then you can't go into the bank and take all your money out either. You can get $300 a day out. That's it. That's what these banks are doing. And that's what the banks in America are going to do. But you don't have knowledge and wisdom or understanding of these things that's going on. You, you need to be out here trying to seek men that's trying to give you that wisdom and knowledge. That came out of this. That opened our eyes to be able to see the stuff going on in the world. We're talking about those prophecies now. That these things have to happen. They must come to pass as, as they're the beginning of sorrows. But you, Jackson, are still out here lollygagging, going to work. I understand you got to go to feed your family to eat and all of that. But you still should be trying to feed your spirit, you know, with, with some righteousness. Not with, with all this feeding, with all this wickedness that this music and this food and all this other energy out there is doing, and this money, especially, is out there breathing. Uh, Jakes are still mentally clueless. You guys have no clue what's going on in the world at all. What's about to happen? You have no clue what's about to happen to you. This white man is about to destroy you. Literally destroy you. Um, back in it's a lot. Almost, uh, it says that for those who despise wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain. Their labor is unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. Their labor is unfruitful. Let me get something right quick, bro. Hey, hey, in one way your labors are unfruitful, man, because everything that you labor for is going to come to naught, man. That's, right. That's why the men of the Lord we labor in the Word, man, to, to bring forth fruit according to the Scriptures, man. Right. To bring forth the elect, that way we could, we could basically enjoy our our harvest. But we can enjoy our fruit in the kingdom, man. We store up our treasures in heaven. That's right. We don't store up our treasures on earth, man. We labor here on earth to pay for what we need now, day by day. Get us by by day by day. Daily bread. You know, that's why our labors, you know, Lord willing, is not in vain. 
Our hope is not in vain. Uh, we hope in the kingdom of heaven, man. We hope to be the elect to get out of here. This right. is not the elect that leaves this place got destroyed, man. Right. Regardless of what happens to us, I mean, you know, we don't get us wrong. We want to be at the elect. We want to make it up out of here. But if we don't, just to see righteousness rule the earth, it's worth whatever we got to go through and be destroyed at the end of the day. That's worth it. How, how many of you Jakes out there, how many of you people, I, I, I'm not asking the white man, I know he don't give a fuck about nobody but himself anyway, but I'm talking about you Jakes. How many of you are, are willing to give up your life for another person to be saved? Not even just your kids. Most of you ain't even prepared for your kids to be uh, saved. But I'm talking about the woman for a, a total stranger to be saved. That's the goddamn woman. Y'all can really get uh, blessed by the Y'all the most self-centered that come down to it, man. Y'all the type that get weak, man, and feed your kids some pork because they ain't native to do that. Y'all don't care about that kid's salvation, man. <laughs> Two or some hours, I don't know. We just gonna, when the shit closed, we we'll put the new one. Um, yeah, like you said, like you women, you some of the most self-centered, selfish people I've ever seen in my life. You guys know nothing but what, you, but, but what's tangible. You have no spirituality anyway. You know, because it's not in you. The word feminine means without no faith, basically. Amina. Femina, aminos, femina. I mean, the mind is faith. You don't have faith anyway. And if you have a, a, what is that, the Hebrews or Romans 11 or what? About faith, faith in the seeds, the sense of the things you see, not seen. Yeah, females mean shit that's tangible. All, all you know is what's tangible. All you know is, is that, okay, I got something to eat. You don't worry about what, what you don't eat. You just care that you, that you got something. You know, you, uh, you, know, you ain't thinking about, okay, well, I'm building up my spirit by fasting, by not being able to eat. You're not thinking about that. You just know the right? Yeah. It's the evidence of things uh, not seen. It's Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for. And what's hope mean? The word hope means to expect. You know, you expect these things to happen. You expect these things to, uh, to be given to you. You know, that's what your faith is about. You got to expect. You can't just say, oh, I, I have faith that it'll happen. No, you really got to expect it. But you got to do the things that are going to make it happen. You can't just say, oh, I, I, I hope I'm a man of God. If you're not doing the things that a man of God is supposed to be doing. If you're not going through the thing that the, mo that the uh, man of the Most High is supposed to be doing, or supposed to be going through. Go ahead and listen to the top again. It says Romans 11 and 1. I mean, Salaki. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Like we out here, if this ain't, if, if this ain't a show of faith by the man of the Most High out here teaching on the street, whether there's somebody listening or not, then what is faith? What is faith? If we out here coming out here, no matter what the temperature or, 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 or who's listening or even the hour, we out here teaching whether you were here or you were forbear, that's faith. Showing that we try to do the things that we're supposed to to get up out of here. We try to wake up the elect by any means. We're trying to get out of here because we expect to get out of here. That's faith. If you say, oh, I want to be, I'm saved. I'm saved from what? What, 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 do you, what do you expect to be saved from? What do you expect to be to, uh, to be, how do you expect to be a man of the most high if you ain't doing the things to get up out of here that you're supposed to be doing? You hear something? If you, if, you don't, if you ain't thinking like that, then you don't have faith. That's why these women don't have faith. That's why they all gotta go to school and try to get that tangible certificate so they can get that job and they can take put food on the table. That's why they gotta go to work every day. I'm not saying don't go to work. That's far from what we're saying. But said they trust in that job it's going to be there forever, and it's not. Yeah. It's not going to be there. And they need to be storing up some spiritual things within themselves to be able to prepare for that day when it's not going to be there. Even though there's no evidence of it that's, that hasn't been seen yet. You know, while there's no evidence, that proves your faith. 
while there's no proof that it's ha gonna happen. You know, we sit here and say, oh, oh the male Lord gonna be delivered by, by so-called UFOs or the chariots, right? There's no evidence or proof that that's gonna happen, but we have faith in it because the word says it. And that's really all the evidence and proof we need. Man. That's it. That, that's more than enough. Because there's evidence and proof in the scripture, man. That's right. They found uh, Pharaoh's chariots, man. They right. found Noah's Ark, man. They found the wall of Jericho. They found the city of Saul, Sodom and Gomorrah that's still right. full of sulfur, man. The sulfur, uh, there's, there's accounts in Roman uh, historical documents that talk about the Lord and Savior, man. That's right. They, they, uh, they, uh, uh, there's an there's a, uh, Egyptian papyra written by a scribe that accounts of the plagues that hit Egypt, man. That's right. Not only that, but the, uh, the, uh, the pyramids themselves. The of hieroglyphics on the, the pyramids. The hieroglyphics man. in the pyramids. Come on, man. This stuff, is, but you just are so defeated and so mentally blinded, all according to prophecy, but so blinded that you don't even know that the Most High uh, has, has set these, that, that's evident something for you to see. That that simply builds your faith in the things that you don't see. That when these prophecies come to pass and these things are happening, it just builds your faith up to, to believe in something higher, something that, that seems even more far-fetched. This is Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. Right. For he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is power. That's right. <laughs> well, it's a lot. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. But without faith, it's a, that's what's going to save you. Your faith. Yeah. What is that scripture that says, uh, show, me, uh, show me your works and I will show you my faith by my faith. Basically, it's impossible to, to, uh, to appease the most high without please the most high without uh, showing your faith. You have to show your faith of the things not seen to have a chance at this. If you don't, then you don't have a chance. You gotta also try to show your faith of the things not seen, and why and why should you get the glory of the things that will come to pass one day? You won't deserve it. That's why you women can't make it if you continue in charity and, 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 and uh, sobriety and hold, or holiness without sobriety. Uh, or the fake charity and holiness without sobriety. <laughs> you have to have all those things to sow your faith to prove to the most high that you deserve to make it. That you at least believe in your man to make it. Because you ain't making it on your own. So you don't need a man to make it. Instead, you will be saved in child period if. Show me your works, and I'll show you. Uh, show me your works. Show me without, your faith. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my works, my faith by my works. Huh. And that, that's good enough. If you come across it good, not, that's the point. You can. You people claim they have faith, and they'll they'll say or, or they'll, they'll try to show their works like yeah, this is it. No, but you have to show your faith by your works. That's the only way you do it. Us coming out is a sign of faith by doing this work. Us not eating pork, that's a work that we have to do because pork is in everything. But if you look at these uh, these commercials for these food restaurants, everything on it is bacon, pork, or, or something abominable for us to not be eating. But they put it out there like that's what's supposed to be. Bacon is on everything. Big ribs and shit. Man, seafood is in, in every TV commercial, every Red Lobster, every Sizzler, every whatever. Go to Corral, they always got something that you're not supposed to be eating on every commercial. Pay attention to it. Every last commercial has something that the, men, that the Israelites are not supposed to be eating. That's in the dietary laws for us not to eat. And especially these so called affordable ones, they always got Jake from over here too. Yep. I always got Jake on the commercial taking a big ass bite of support. Let me tell you something cold blooded. I'm watching a cartoon, you know, I, I try to pay attention to what my kids are watching, so I'm watching cartoons with them. And they, they really had, um, I don't remember what cartoon it was, but they had these superheroes out there um, trying to make this, this, this immortal sandwich. When you eat a piece of this sandwich, you'll be immortal. Right, but they have to go out and get all the elements of it. So one had to go get the bread, another had to get the meat, the other had to get the vegetables, the lettuce or whatever, right? 
Why did they have a Jake, the black little robotic dude, have to get the bacon? That was his thing. He had to go get the bacon. And I'm sitting up there, I look at my BM like, hey, you see this shit? He's like, what? What? What's wrong with that? It's a cartoon. They couldn't, couldn't have him bring home the bread, right? They have to bring home the bacon. And they put on whatever the point about, you know, about whatever went on in the cartoon, but that's the point. They're pushing that out on you because they, that's a, that's a, that's a, um, a subliminal message to you, Jace, that you have to have that pork, that you have to have that shrimp, that you have to have that catfish. And that's one thing that this white man masters too, man, subliminally oh. controlling you, you Jake's up. Subliminally controlling you, Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Right. The white man has mastered that to the teeth. From from uh, entertainment on television uh -huh. to music to uh, to the commercials, showing what type of fashion you should be wearing, right. showing what type of women you should be going for. This white man has mastered mentally controlling you, simple Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. Man. And let me say something. This is how good he even got with it, because back in about uh, two thousand, early two thousand, about ten years ago. He did, he did the transformation in less than 10 years. Because we went from wearing uh, big, long, super baggy t-shirts and baggy pants to tight clothes. And that happened damn near overnight. That, happened. That, happened, that, that literally happened overnight. It happened so fast, I never got a chance to catch on to it. I mean, that was some gay ass shit anyway. And I seen it a mile away, but I didn't even see when it happened. I just know people walking around with mohawks, skinny jeans, and little tight t-shirts and shirts and whatnot. Overnight, literally. And you people don't even know that that happened. Most of you forget that you, the same ones that are wearing a t shirt down to their kneecaps, is now wearing skinny jeans. And big clown ass, colorful ass shoes. I was, in college. I was in college when that shit Hey, Niggas was literally wearing t shirts as long as these garments. Tell you. Looking like dresses. Now they wearing yeah. bitch pants. And let me say this. Guess what? I just, it just clicked for me. Guess who was wearing that at first? Lil Wayne, the same one that turned around and wore that, uh, the fucking skinny shit. He, they used the same motherfucker to, 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 to change the style on you overnight. And you never questioned, like, why did he change the style up like that? You never once questioned it. Go back and look at his, at his track record. He had the, he used to have the, when he was with the hot boys in them, he had the big super, uh, long, uh, uh t shirts on and the big baggy clothes. Now look at him. He's a little wheezy wearing skinny jeans and the shit hanging off his ass. Uh, and, and Ugg boots. I guarantee, man, if they put a if they put an actual music video out with that nigga kissing another man, watch how many niggas start kissing niggas in that group. Man, my beer was watching Cheaters last night, man. They had the gay shit on Cheaters, man. And they and they dressing like regular Jake. Hats, sagging, the jean shorts, and you know what I'm saying, a little button ups and everything that Jake wear. Looking like regular men, they gay as fuck. That shit hurt my spirit. I'm, I'm gonna just fucking slap the controller out of her hand. Just, well, but I just left out. Fuck it. I'm just going out to just work out or some shit. I'm getting the fuck out of here. The shit that you guys think profits something, and, and that's the first thing. A lot of you men are fucking down men. You little boys. But a fucking mama boy spirit on you. You always wanna appease a woman. I don't even appease my mom no more. She either gonna be happy with what I am or, or who, what I do or not. I don't give a damn. I'm, I'm worried about pleasing the Heavenly Father, not my father or my mother. The Heavenly Father. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. That's right. The unrighteous can't inherit the kingdom of the Most High. That's part of the works you have to show to, to make it. You have to, to do to the best of your ability to be righteous. And the only way to be righteous is these statutes of laws and commandments. Trying to follow them to the best of your ability. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor I idolaters, yep. nor adulterers. Yep. So you can't, you can't have idol worship. You can't be an adulteress even with the next man's woman. All it takes is for you to ask. And you with somebody, if they lie, that's on them. But if you have a feeling in your spirit that they, that they are with somebody, then don't do it. The brother, uh, the brother in LA gave me the, 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 you know, the best advice ever. He said, when in doubt, throw it out. If there's a doubt in your spirit about if it's righteous or not, just don't do it. Hey, just like milk, man. 
Milk may have a later expiration date on it, but when you, you it's, it's yeah. smell a little yeah. bit funny, man. Fuck that shit. Straight up. Just toss that shit. Real man. shit. But uh, it says, uh, it's a lot. It says, uh, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Or that's that's the whole spirit right there. And Lil Wayne pushed on you and you picked up with no problem. The effeminate, those men that, that are acting like females. Right. And a lot of you, Jake's and, and the men, so-called men, will be like females. Hey, that's because uh you look up that word effeminate, I forget the exact word for it, but it says a soft touch. <laughs> a man ain't supposed a man is supposed to be all steering rough, man. Men ain't supposed to have no soft touch. That's right. Tell me what man, especially in the ancient days, you know, uh, we, we was mainly uh, shepherds, man. We, we, we tilled the ground, man. We tended to the flock. Working. It was outside working. What man working with his hands, man, in the field, tilling the ground, man, working with wood, picks, axles, shovels, whatever type of tools we was using, dealing with beasts, got a soft touch, man. Right. Every touch about that man is rough and austere. But it's not just talking about soft hands. No, it means uh, uh, every uh, every thought of your mind is, is rough. It's straightforward and rough, austere. That that's what a man is supposed to have. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't like how we come out here and we and we deliver this word to you, it ain't smooth. It don't sound all good. Then, then you need to that's gird up thy loins like a man. Man the fuck up and deal with it, man. That goes to all you Latinos, Hispanics. Uh, Native Americans and so-called Negroes, man, man the fuck up, man. Cause this white man gonna, gonna, he's a fucking faggot anyway. He gonna run on you and try to show you who's a man. And he's not even close to what we supposed to be, to what we can be, to what you will be when you add this word and sincerity and truth to, to your, to your life. Or it gets added to your life by the most sides. Fuck. This is Job 38 and 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee. Gird up thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee. The Most High demands you to do that to come into this thing. If you you can't you can't be a man of the Lord, uh, getting your eyebrows waxed, getting manicures and pedicures, and and, and caring about the, uh, the, the 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 flesh, because that's all fleshly works. That has nothing to do. With, with, with being a spiritual man. That's nothing to do with that. But but that but that's the whole oh. Cause, Cause not everybody, not everybody that, that thinks that they that they have a righteous spirit on them, righteous according to what? If you ain't uh, uh, making sure that your righteousness is according to this word, then, then you ain't then you ain't righteous. What's that? Uh, we'll go ahead and read that whole scripture. This one. Start back at the top. This First Corinthians six and nine. I'll break that up so Know ye not that the unrighteous should not inherit the kingdom of the Most High? Hey, and that's that's really why two thirds of our people got to die on this side. Man. Because they can't inherit the next life to come, man. Because they choose to follow an unrighteous path. Man. It says, uh, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Right. You cannot get into the kingdom of the Most High by following any of those things that just were named. Nor, nor effeminate, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, what is it, nor uh, covetous, covetous, devourers, drunkards. A, a lot of those covetous and homosexuals, abusers of themselves with mankind. And, and covetous is, is trying to, trying to be self, is trying to bring everything onto yourself. You know, that being covetous of money, being right. covetous of, of, of women. Well, one with somebody else's. Right, one with somebody else. You're not supposed to do that. That's an intent to man. Be a man to get your own, man. If, if it's own. meant for you to have. If it ain't meant for you to have, man up and deal with it. Appreciate what you got first. It says, uh, verse 11, As such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, 
but ye are justified in the name of Yahweh Shad and by the spirit of our power. That's right. Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And that's basically, no matter what you think, you can be pulling, you, if you pull it off one of, them, one of the things that the brother just read in, in Corinthians, and you're not a man of the Lord. Those are pretty easy to not follow. Those are very easy. Those are the easiest ones. Those are, the, are like the uh, the milk. Those are the, are the simple up. stuff. To man up, to not, to not be no faggot. That's right. You not want to stick your dick in another man's ass. Or, or stick to, your dick in another woman. To stick your dick another in another man's, man's woman. To not want something that's not yours or somebody else's man. That's right. To, to not be uh, 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 wild out here in these streets, man, revilers. To not extort your people, man. Not to eat all these all these messed up foods. That's a form of covetousness. We ain't supposed to be eating. All these so-called delicacies that our people eat are, are abominations unto us. They forget about the, the, the wonderful delicacy of, 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 uh, of lamb, of, of, uh, of venison. Right, right, they got that, those, are, those are the meats that you should be looking for. Not looking for crab legs and shrimp and catfish. Those are the, those are the clean of you. Not trying to cover nice cars and big rims and lots of cash that's going to collapse any day now. That's not what you should be out here looking for. But the basic necessities. Go ahead with that. You know. It says, uh, which one? First. Uh, 16, 16. 16. 16. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High. First off, all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High. So it's coming from a more righteous place than our minds or our flesh can, can, uh, can, can see. So that's why we follow this, this word so, so closely. And, and you look at your pastors, if he's saving, he ain't in the right spirit. Never mind the fact that he's in the building trying to teach. You know, and then got on a three-piece suit. That's not what he's supposed to have on. It tells us exactly what we should be doing and what we should look like. That he was going to give us uh, men of, according to his own heart. That's what the Most High said. He's going to give us uh, pastors according to his own heart. That's how you know the difference. That will feed you with knowledge and understanding of these scriptures and of righteousness. And of, and of the wickedness that's going on in this world. They're going to let you know to stay away from this because this is that. And that is this. And that the righteousness is the right things that you should be looking and trying to be about. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Profitable for doctrine means something that's worth following or looking into or to, uh, to be able to follow. Go ahead. For, for correction. Correction. For instruction in Instru righteousness. For correction and instruction in righteousness. So on you for that. Now it says, all scripture. Right, right. From the Old to the New Testament. Right. It's given for correction, reproof, for doctrine, and for instruction. You're supposed to follow instruction. That's right. And the Old Testament has the laws, which are the instructions of what to and what not to do. And they have a lot of the history of the examples of what happens when you do and do not follow. So why would you want to take that out? That's a lot of the important things that you need. And if you go into the New Testament, it has a lot of references to the Old Testament. It has not stopped. The New Testament doesn't do nothing but complement the Old Testament. Exactly. The only thing that Testament means is covenant. Man. That's right. You can't have a new covenant without an old covenant. That's right. Otherwise, it's just a covenant. Um, that was the end of that. That was 17 also? No, no, no. This is verse 17. It says that the man of the Most High may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished in, unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished, that, they, that he may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Meaning there's nothing 
that should, should, should come through your spirit that don't let you know it, yes or no. Should I be able to do this or not? This word simplifies your life. It makes decision make, make it easy for you. If you're, if you're not sure what to do, it'll put straight, straight forward with you of whether you should or shouldn't. If you have doubt within yourself, search the scriptures and the answer's in there. Search your spirit, pray to the most high in the right name and he will reveal it to you if he's working with you. If he's not, then you need to be out having a good time before you get destroyed anyway. Live it up before you get destroyed anyway. But if this strikes a chord in you, because she, the sheep hear the voice, and the voice is simply this word that we put now. Well, if it strikes a chord in you, then, then follow that. Because it's going to correct you and make you perfect, which is acceptable unto the Most High. That's who can be saved. Those that's doing this work in sincerity and in truth, that's following the statutes of the law, laws and commandments to the best of their ability, that's who has a chance. Because the brother said, uh, you know, Yahweh shy sheep hear his voice, man. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, Mark 4 and 11. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of the Most High. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Yep. It's a mystery to you that, that don't hear this, hear this word. But to those that hear it, it's for you to, to pick it up and run with it and pass it on to those that also hear it. That have, so they can have the opportunity to hear it or not. Because that's how you fish. You, you, put, you put the bait on the line and you cast it out. You don't just put the bait and you just hold the bait and the fish wants to jump in the boat with you. You got to cast it out. You got to go and put it out there for them to, to grab onto it. You know, you got to put it out there, whether it be on the internet, but especially out on the street putting the vibration out on the earth. Not just out the uh, the world wide web, but the actual energy of the actual world, of this earth. You have to push that vibration out there. And the more the vibration is out there, the more the opposite of, of negative vibration is out there. But what's going to combat it? you got to com combat the negative with the positive. Because it's a spiritual war out here. That's the only way to do it. And the more righteousness that you do, the better it is. The more this white man will have to pull, pull all the tricks out the hat. Verse 12, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. That's exactly the, that's exactly what, what's got to come to pass for this to work. For you to be in this thing, that's what has to happen. Your mind has to be and your spirit has to be in tune with this thing for that to happen to you. You know, so you can be cleansed and then have an opportunity to be saved. All right, it says, uh, St. Mark 4 and 11. All right, it says, uh, and he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of the Most High. It's given to us to understand that they're here, the sheep that here, and that can see what's going on in this world. The so-called prophet, you know, the prophet is the one that the word prophet simply means to say before. We're simply out here saying the word pro like this is before, and as beside means to, to say. We're simply out here saying something before it happens. I don't mean we out here levitating and got magic carpets and crystal balls out here. It's just the most high open our eyes to be able to see what's going on. And if that's unto you to be able to see what's going on, continue. It says, uh, but unto them that are without all these things are done in parables. But everybody else, it's a mystery to you because you don't understand it. It makes no sense to you what we're really out here doing or what this word is really talking about. It's in parables. You can't decipher the code of what, what's going on. That seeing they may see and not perceive. Seeing that they may see and not be able to understand what they're seeing. They can't perceive it. They don't understand what they're seeing. They don't understand that, the, that there's love worlds all over the world. That there's terrorist threats and bombs going on all over the United States. That this dollar bill is about to crash. That the price of everything has went up because of the devaluing of the money. Which is another sign of it about to crash. In hearing they may hear and not understand. That you may hear 
the word of the Most High coming out in truth and sincerity, and in the spirit, the right spirit of the Most High. But you don't. But you may not be able to hear that. It, it you doesn't, doesn't, doesn't click to you. Man. It, right. It, it don't stick to you like it should, man. Right. You you hear it. You see it. If this ain't a sign for you, young men, young so-called minority men coming out teaching the Bible in boldness, man, speaking boldly against the wicked-ass country that got them and their people and have had them and their people under oppression for centuries, if this ain't a sign to you, then you're blind, man. The Most High blinded you, man. If, if you hear what these young men are out here on these streets and talking about, coming out speaking boldly in the name of Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh Shai, man, out here teaching the Bible, and speaking about the end times coming and you don't, if that doesn't stick on you, man, the Most High have blinded your, your eyes and your ears, man. He shut them, man. Why? It's, uh, it's going to say, it says, uh, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven. Because you ain't meant to get it on this side, man. The Most High, Yahweh Shai didn't come to, to, to save everybody on this first go around, man. That's right. The person you call Jesus Christ didn't die to save everybody on this first go around, man. Two thirds of you Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans are going to have to know the Lord's judgment through death by pain, man. That's right. That's how y'all going to have to find out the truth of the matter through you getting put to death. Right, righteously so. Because y'all don't know the truth of the matter, man. Y'all rather listen to y'all pork chop eating pastor, man. That commits adultery with some of the women in y'all congregation. Small face pastor. That shaves his beard every other week, man. Every week. Every Saturday before Sunday service. I'm telling you, man, you Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, man, y'all going to get an a, 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 a ill death sentence out here, man. Right. Y'all really have no major, beard. About. Yeah, major death issue towards you, man. Said, um, back in the uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 11, no, 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 3 and 10, but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imagination. <laughs> the, the, They're going to be punished yeah, according to your the own The worst ways, fears is, going, is what you're going to be destroyed by. Right? You're going to be punished by your worst fears. Even no matter how conceivable they are or not to you, that's going to happen to you. The right. Most High is going to manifest those things to you if you don't get right. And it's only for you to get right. I had something uh, about the word of the death. Uh, Isaiah 29 and 18. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Because that's what all of us were blind and deaf at one time when, the, when this book was sealed. Matter of fact, isn't that in uh, Revelations, uh, the sixth chapter? But the book being sealed and then being unsealed. Yeah, when the, the book was sealed, we had no clue what was going on in this book. We we had a zeal, but we didn't know how to break it down or understand the things because the, uh, the end of the times wasn't now. Our parents and our grandparents, they went to church all the time, but they didn't understand what was really going on. That, that, that pimp ass pastor was out there just telling them whatever made them put money into the collection plate. And that was good enough. But not, not realizing that it will, it will plant a seed into their grandchildren and then, and then their children to come out here and put the word out in sincerity and in truth. Because that was in our spirit and we were chosen from the beginning to get it. For in this time for our eyes to be open. Because no, nobody out here was perfect. We didn't wake up with complete righteousness on our minds. So me, me myself too. It's a lot myself and well. Now, that was it. Now, go ahead. This is uh, Revelation 5, and I'm sorry, uh, start at the top. It says, um, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. The book was sealed, but we couldn't understand it. That's just basically how we break that down. We couldn't understand the book back then. You know, because it was a seal on it. The Most High didn't open our spirits to be able to perceive, to hear, or, 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 or to see what was going on in it. Or understand what was going on in it. You know? Verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Mm -hmm. and, who, and who is that? Yahweh Shah. When that name opens up to you, 
And when, when his spirit opens up to you and, and chooses you to, to, to know and understand his word, that's when the book is now unsealed. Because now it's like algebra. Now you have the, uh, the components to put the problem together and, uh, and, and to solve it. You know what A plus B is, and now therefore you can answer what C, you can find out what C is. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book. No matter what, before the 70s, before this word was, was opened up, there was nobody that could break this word down in sincerity and in truth. No one else understood this book. This book was sealed completely. There was not a man on the earth, walking the earth, that, can, that knew this book. Hey, hey, even, even, uh, even during Yahweh Shai's time, man. Because you see, when Yahweh Shai came, man, 2,000 years ago, he had to curse motherfuckers out, man, because they didn't yeah. understand the true meaning of the scripture. Right? Right, he, he, he even told him about himself, but you care not knowing the scriptures. You care not knowing, not knowing the, the meaning nor the power of the scriptures. That's right. You oh, ye of little faith. You know, because if they had faith and they under, what they didn't understand, it would have been opened up to them. Yeah. It says, uh, verse 4, And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Right. And one of the elders says unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book, Jehoshaphat, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And to loose the seven seals thereof. And when it was when it was loosed, these prophecies came out and, and with understanding. And it was able to be searched out and to find out the deeper meanings of all of this stuff. The languages were, were, were able to be uh, to open up. They started studying in the Greek. They passed it on. They had the uh, ancient Hebrew came about. And they had they passed it on. Start up with King Marshall. And on down to the elders. And, and, and now on to us. That's fruit. Because the seal was now open. But it's still not opened up to everyone. I wrote that scripture to you. Then you keep going. This is verse 6. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of the Most High sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. That's right. Hey, and that's why we always supposed to be constantly praying. Man. Praying without ceasing. That's right. It says, uh, And they sung the new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to the Most High, so, so that was the second covenant. Well, nah, the second covenant buying us back to the Most High, man. Right. By the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And thou hast made us unto our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. That's right, and we will reign on earth. The kingdom of heaven is on earth. You know, and then we will reign on earth in the kingdom of heaven. That, that's what this is all about. There's no mystical cloud. Uh, heaven or nowhere like that. Now there are uh, uh, other many mansions in the heavens, other planets that will be in the heavens, but we will reign on a planet. The kingdom of heaven will be on earth, will be on a planet. That's the proof that is talking about Israel, man, that's going to rule on earth. It's uh, Exodus 19, I'm going to start at 3, it says, And Moses went up unto the Most High, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. I'm going to go down to five. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Right. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. That's how that's how you that's how you that's who it was for. You know that, we, that that's the reward you get. And that you're not just the lowly, 
But we we gonna be back on top because we were meant to be on top. We were always meant to be on top. We weren't meant to be to be uh, put in slavery, but we went off. And the Most High turned his back on us. But then he allowed his son, Yahweh Shai, to come up and redeem some of us back to him. He actually redeemed us all, but he actually had a chosen to have a more excellent ministry. Where ain't so much going on. There ain't so much false prophets out there as it was back in those other times. But the more that the ministry will be from so, so we won't have to go oh, for right right uh, right 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 that same amount of uh, scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees and all of them that, that, were, uh, that were going off were here today, which they are, but they were able to come into the fold today. We, and with all the perils that's going on in, in today's world, we would never make it up out of here. We would never make it up out of here. That's why it's such a small number, 144,000 men that can get you up out of here. To have an opportunity to get up out of here. That's all it is. And, and none else. Everybody else must know it after death by pain. That's the only way you're going to get this thing. Is after death by pain. You have to suffer that to get through there. And some of you, and a lot of you, because we see how every year, there's a lot of you get cut off and fall out. Because it's too much for you to handle. Just going through the, the little, the, the, the fiery trials that we have to go through, you can't deal with it. There, there, there's so-called brothers that were once brothers that was in this, that were, I guess they were never brothers, that were in this thing, that are falling out like, like, like fruit flies and pestilences, man. Falling right off. Like, 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 like rain is in the room. Because, because they can't handle the fiery trial that's going on. If you don't know you're gonna lose everything, then you ain't built for this. Gird up your lords and man up to it. Deal with it. And the most I will give you a breath of of uh of uh what the word I'm looking for? Of uh not relaxation, a breath of uh, fresh air, so to speak. Breath of rest to it. Yeah, yeah, hey, rest in fact, the scriptures. Matter of fact, let me get that. Let's see. I'm gonna just go to receive clarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Um, right, uh, matter of fact, Isaiah 20, 8 and 12, to whom he said. This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. What's the rest? Go go up. Yeah, yeah, come. Um, uh, set, 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 set. Isaiah 28 and 7. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink. Now, wine and strong drink you know, is talking about different doctrines, philosophies, beliefs, ideologies, theologies, whatever the fuck you want to go into that's not dealing with the truth of these scriptures and the true name of the Most High and His Son. Right. It says, uh, and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink and are swallowed up of what? And all these pastors, all these so-called priests, deacons, so-called apostles, man, that's not coming in the name of Yahweh Shem Yahushai. That's not telling you that you're Israelites, man. From the 12 tribes of Israel, that's not telling you what the mark of the beast is, man. They all err through strong wine. They going out the way and all these other false prophets that are of, are of the congregation of Israel that know their nationality, man, that's still not pushing that true name, man, they also hear the strong one. Or even telling you all of the, the, uh, the statutes, all the commandments that you should be following, the simple stuff. Or even the prophets. That's right. The mark of the beast, man. It's not Christianity. That's the case we all got to be all there. Right, because we all fell under the Christianity doctrine at some point in time somewhere in life. Says, uh, they are all they are swallowed up of wine, they are out of the way through strong drink. Jeez. They err in vision, they stumble in judgment. That's right. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness. So there is no pl place clean. That's right, there ain't no clean place out here. Even the, even the ground that we we standing on, man, pushing this word, man, is, is defiled and corrupt, man. It's blood that defiled this land, man. Right. There's no, not one clean place in America, man. The whole land is defiled by blood, man. And it's not going to be cleansed until the blood of him that shed it is spilled. Yeah. So, uh, to whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. What's the milk, man? The main part of that milk is knowing your nationality, man. That's right. Knowing that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Ephraim, the tribe of Gad, the tribe of Ishakar, man. 
Another part of that milk is knowing the true color of the, of the Lord and Savior, man. That's right. Knowing the true name of the Lord and Savior. Knowing that his mom wasn't a virgin. That she was just a young woman that did have sex with yeah. Joseph. That's, yeah. that's the basics and the simplicity and the easy things in the scriptures. I mean, that's, that's plain. Knowing how the earth was created, man. Knowing that there was more than one Adam, man. There was a whole tribe of Adam. Called the Adamites, man. Right. Those are just the basics of the milk of this thing. And milk is for babies. Babies can digest milk and it has all the nutrients that, you, that you're supposed to, uh, to have in it. Those are milk. That's why I said those that are uh, weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. I mean, you have a basic understanding of things already. And, that, and when you're drawn from the breast, you're usually able to walk. That means you can go out and start doing these things. When you want to keep the analogy of, of, uh, of, of babies and, and, and toddlers and infant children, you know? And true, true enough, you do have to crawl before you walk. So let's throw that in there. Don't think you're just going to jump in and gain all the deep knowledge of this thing. That's not how it works. Stay with your milk, build a, found, uh, a, a strong foundation, Start and then build from there. to it every now and then. That's right. Add a little, some cereal, little cereal to the milk. A little then you oat can start maybe. eating some oatmeal. And then you can eat a little bit. Then you can start drinking water with that. And then the parents, man, you know, the, the parents, which are the elders, man. That's right. They can start tearing down little pieces of chicken for you, man. Mm -hmm. Or oh, start... no, 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 little pieces of bread first. Yeah, so give you a little bit, of little bread, bit of, yeah. little bread to put the make that soggy. Then they, you mm -hmm. know, they start tearing yeah. off the little pieces of meat, meat, chew it up for you, water it down a little bit for you, That's and right. feed it to you. That's right. And then, then you eventually, can start your teeth own. and all of that will grow in, where you're prepared to 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 to, to devour or to ingest yeah. and digest that meat. And that bread is easily digested, and that water is actually working for you. And you still can drink milk. Because the elders, they just, they just served. Bro, they just served us a plate of meat. <laughs> they served us a full <laughs> plate of meat. Man, with that Daniel's 11, man. And, 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 and I'm still studying in on that. Right, I mean, because that's what it does. It sparks you to keep, to keep wanting to know more and more. And that's what this is supposed to do, to, to, um, that you may grow thereby. Cause this, they're not just giving out tests for us to just to, to do. It's for you to, to, to get this thing and then grow from there and to keep yeah. growing. So keep growing from there to get understanding of it and to keep growing from there. More importantly, whether it be a test, man, they do it for our, for our edification. Right. That we can understand these things. It's just it, man. What, what if you out there on the highways, man? And the actual history scholar come up to you, man. And he start mm -hmm. asking you about the... the uh, the, the Persian Empire, man. They were about the Babylonian captivity, about the times of Daniel. He started asking you about the different rulers during different times, man, the different wars that took place, man, between the Greeks and the Persians, between Alexander, uh, about Heliodorus, man. But, it, but we, we should have the, we, we have the tools to, to be able to gain this. Exactly. Like the elder said, They've already put in place all the tools for us to uh, to be able to grow by. We know where to go to get this information. We know how, and, and apparently, the spirit is dealing with some of us. So we have we, we have a way to do it. Those that the spirit's not dealing with, they're saying it for you anyway. But those that it is for, it's been as many as that. Yes, I stop being lazy. That's that's what it is. And and, and fast and pray to the Most High. That he opens you up and give you that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures. And put the spirit on you to fill your, your, your lamp full of, full of oil. Let your fire not go out. You know? You got to pray for those things. It's, it, all these things are very important and vital for a man of the Lord. Now, where was we at, bro? Yeah, you got to tell me the words here. Okay, um, back into them that can't see, I'm going to run it up. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 29 and 4. Matter of fact, let me read up some. Let me read 29 and, uh, and 2. It says, And Moses called unto all Israel. Oh, Salah, yes, Salah. I'm going to put it in the land that we are. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, 
for precept must be upon precept. Law upon law. Precept upon precept. Law upon law. Line upon line. Verse upon verse. Line upon line. Verse upon verse. Because when you first start reading the scriptures, man, that's how you really start reading. That's how I started reading the person. Verse upon verse, man, from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation. Then I started doing what? What? Go back up and say, precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Then you start going from book to book. You kind of start hopping around. You right. kind of just read through, straight through the Gospels. Then hop back in the Old Testament. I think after I did Genesis to Revelation, I hopped back in Isaiah. We went through Isaiah and Jeremiah. Then I went to the Gospels real fast. Then I read the whole story about Jehovah Shai all over again from Matthew to Luke or Matthew to John. Then go back and like, that's how you read. Not only to hear a little, hear a little, man, that's how you match up the precepts, man, to prove one another. Right. You get one precept here, then you go to the New Testament from the Old Testament that complements the Old Testament. Man. Right. And the way the, the, this word is put together, the Bible is written and put together, that's the only way you're gonna get the full understanding. Cause some precepts have one chunk, meaning they're talking about Israel and this subject. And then you go to another subject that's talking about how it's not talking about the rest of the world and that subject. So it, it, it gives you the whole scope of everything while talking about one subject or another. You gotta jump around to get the whole scope of what it's talking about. Even though it's broken up into pieces, you gotta put that puzzle together to finally get the whole vision of what's going on. It's a puzzle, literally. This is literally a puzzle. Never mind your, uh, your uh, uh, crossword puzzles, what's the other one, uh, the numbers? Uh, uh, Sudoku, so so yeah, so whatever. This, this is way better than all of that. This is, not, this is better than a jigsaw puzzle. This is a type of puzzle that can save your life. When you get the understanding of it, this you put this together with it, and it literally does that. It saves your life. It changes your life and makes it better. Whether you can be saved or you can not. It, it, it tears you away from all the bullshit that goes on in this world. All the loud speakers of bumping nonsense and then big ass, worthless ass rims that couldn't outrun a, a fucking baby on a tricycle. That's what that's what this gets you away from. This puts you in the perspective of what's really important in life. But you have to have the milk and the understanding of how to, how to get it. That's why you have to be weaned from the milk. That's also milk, to know to read precept upon precept, line upon line. That's also milk. Keep going, it says, uh, for with stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak this, uh, speak to this people. That's right, so it was prophesied that these words of these scriptures were going to be spoken to the nation of Israel in another tongue other than Hebrew, man. That's right. That tongue is English, Spanish, uh, Patois for the brothers out there in Jamaica, man. You know? Uh, uh, the brother out there in Germany. Right. Down too. Come, come. Right, right. It says, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may call the weary to rest. That's right. The scriptures, is out. that's where the point was, man. The scriptures is the rest that we're going to put at the most high causes us to rest in because this land, this world, this life is not our rest. Man. Not at all. But our life is in the scriptures. So that's where our rest is as of right now. It's not in, in having a big bank account or large rims or nothing like that. You ain't got no rest with a big bank account, man, because you got to do so much shit to obtain that and to, and to maintain it. And, and to this, the refreshing yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord must, uh, sorry, but the word of, of the Lord was up unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backwards and be broken and right. snared and taken. Don't right. for you dim eyed deaf people that can't hear, the dumb, deaf, and blind that can't hear. That's also why it trapped you up. That the, that the, that the, those that are waiting for the milk know how to, that their eyes have been opened, can see it, precept upon precept in the puzzle form, but it also snares and traps you up and, and don't give you the understanding for those that it's not meant for. Because we do have salakra, brother. We, we, we do have a zeal to want to know this word, but not all have the eyes or the minds that, that's ready for it. It wasn't open to see it or to hear it. That's all. Uh, uh, <coughs> 
Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell, we are at agreement. When the overflowing scourge, the scourge shall pass through, it's, it's enough. Yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was but I had uh, a the dumb death reply. This is Isaiah 32 and 3. It says, The eyes of them that, that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. And, that, and that's, that's pretty straightforward. When you when you are chosen, as I said, many are called, but or if you were chosen, when you're chosen to hear this word, that, that's when you your eyes are open to understand and to push this word out. That you can put these prophecies together. That you can that you can that you can receive instruction. You know? That, that's what this gives you. It gives you the ability to understand this thing. I got, I got another one. Isaiah 33 and 19. Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou cannot understand. It's going to be people that you can understand. Matter of fact, that's the Acts, the first chapter, how we hear every, every man his own tongue. That's the second chapter, right? It's uh, Acts 2 and 1. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was full, fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. The day of Pentecost is the uh, feast of weeks. In a certain amount of time, and there's a feast. Continue. It says, uh, verse 2. No, no, sorry, it's not one again. This is uh, Acts 2 and 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They're all together in one place. Yeah. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Mm -hmm. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. That's right. The Spirit came in the room. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were filled all with the Holy Spirit. Let me say real quick, the cloven tongues was actually uh, a, a way to speak multiple languages. It was, was given unto them. But, but an analogy of that is that it, they, they were able to speak multiple languages. That's why they were cloven tongues, man. It says, uh, And the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. That, that also goes to show you that there were Jews, matter of fact, that there were Jews in every nation. Yeah, yeah. No, you think it's somewhere else. It says, uh, verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speaking in his own language. We're still talking about the Jews. It says, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Now they look like they were all from northern Israel, all of Galilee, from the land of Galilee. That's the slugs too. Yeah. Right. But they actually, <laughs> that was the slums. Galilee was the slums. That's where Yahweh Shai was from. For y'all don't know, Yahweh Shai was a, if he was here in the day's time, y'all would look at him like he was a hood nigga. Straight up. He was from the, from the slum. He was from the ghetto. Straight up. That, just like, that's another but, thing that I know that that's, we're connected to him through that, because that's where we're at. But not only that, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you look at it like that, because they said, well, are not all of these Galileans, meaning from the ghetto, man, what opportunity does a man from the ghetto have to get out other abroad, other places, and learn, learn those language. languages, man? So it shows the power of the Most High. That's right. Who's dealing with them. That was that powerful rushing wind that came in yeah. that gave them cloven tongues. It says that they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, 
are not all these which speak Galileans. Right. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Now, let me say, there were men from all over in the, at the Feast of Pentecost <coughs> that came up to feast. And to Israel, the feast from all the different... Uh, Jews from all over. Yeah, let me say that right. There were Jews, people that, 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 whether they knew they were Jews or not, they came up to feast. And there were devout men that came up to feast. They knew they, knew. they were devout, they were devout men. men. Right. And they came up, but they heard it from the land, the language from the lands that they were in. Even though they were keeping the customs of the, you know, they lived in the other lands, they still knew that they were Jews, devout men, out of every nation upon the, the, um, the earth, the face of the earth. So that's a lot. So that shows that we were all um, scattered abroad across the whole four corners of the earth. This is a uh, verse eight. It says, "In hell, hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes mm -hmm. and Elamites right. and the dwellers of Mesopotamia." Don't, that's the, they're just they're about to name the whole. They're basically about to name the whole earth. Oh, the whole. The uh, except for. Oh, yeah, what's that? Yeah. Um, oh, world. Oh, yeah, exactly. So far. Because the New Americas wasn't a part of that right now. And actually, even though some the Northern Kingdom was already over in the New Americas at that point, but they knew it, but that's something separate. It says, and in Judea, and in Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia. When you look at a map, all these are, are different countries that Jews shouldn't be in, really, and all those different lands surrounding Israel. Now, so Elam is down in, in Africa, East Africa, and uh, and I said, what else? So Asia, Asia Minor is not too far from there. Cappadocia, Cappadocia, as you, as you call it today. Um, um, Greece, they're gonna keep, they're gonna name the whole region, the whole, whole world, pretty much, of where, of where our people were spread out to. Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene. That's another Africa. And strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, newcomers, right. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of the Most High. And because not everybody else in you know, the other nations was going to push the word of the Most High like that back then. Only the, only the Jews were pushing out uh, the words of the Most High. All these other nations weren't doing it like they're doing today. You didn't have... Uh, so-called white men out there pushing the word of the Most High. You didn't have you didn't have Elam Elamites pushing the word of the Most High, pro uh, prophesying about Yahweh Shai. You didn't have that. The one the ones that looked like them that were they were just in another. Um, those were those Gentiles that were uh, in, a, um, in a different um, in a different land that were actually in the spirit Israelites. In the spirit, they were still our people that were doing that. They may have taken on the customs uh, of those other people. They may have looked Asian. They may have looked uh, uh, Persian. But but our people, the spirit was always in us to want to push this word out in sincerity and in truth. Oh, Acts one, the word was that we would be scattered out the whole four corners of the earth. Deuteronomy uh, 29 and 19. And it shall come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I have walked, I have, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart. To add drunkenness to thirst, the Lord will not spare him. It, 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 
gets into that. Ezekiel 36 and 17 says, Son of man, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Because we had our land, man. We still was up there committing idolatry. Committed adultery with. So therefore, every time we went up, the Most High punished us and put us under subjection under a different nation. It says, uh, their way was before me as the uncleanness of the removed woman. That's us. He said, our sin, our transgressions was before him like a female on her period. Right? He's supposed to excommunicate that bitch until she's clean. Right? Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they shall that they have shed upon the land, right. and for their idols wherewith they have polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them. So that's why you had Jews from all those different countries, man. Because we was all scattered because we chose to transgress the laws of the Heavenly Father, man. That's the, that's the best way you take the people down and you weaken the people. You divide them, man. Right. You set them apart. That's in the art of war. Divide and conquer. And that's in the, that's in the motherfucking, uh, 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 shit, the, the Willie Lynch letter, man. Yeah. Where you think he got that from? Sun Tzu? That's right. Art of war? Uh, keep going. Yeah, one more. This is up. Uh, and when? Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna start at the top of 19. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doing doings. I judged them. And when they entered into the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to me, "These are the people of the Lord." And are gone forth out of out of his land. That's right, man. So so we profane the most high's name, man, once the heathen seen us at our terrible state, man. Seen us at our low state because basically, man, we made it appear to the heathen that the most high had no power. Look at his people, man. Look what kind of people that the that the power of the universe is dealing with. Right. It's just like a, a, a slut, a slutty little daughter is gonna bring her father shame, man, and profane that name. That he's bestowed on, upon her, man. Exactly right, bro. Uh, Basically, like we embarrassed the most high, man. But, 21. But I have pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel have profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore said the house of Israel, uh, Thus said the Lord God, I do, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but mine holy name's sake. So it's on the most side, man. Hey, he he didn't keep saving us and redeeming us for our sakes, man. Right. Because he could have raised up stones to be us, man. And really, hey, when you break it down, man, he did raise up stones. Man. Because broken down stones is nothing but dirt and dust of the earth, man. We're ready for the dust of the earth. That's how we form. Yeah. And, and actually, if you want to go a little further, now, it may sound like I'm reaching, but, but it makes sense if you, if you go there with it. He did raise up the stone. What did he have uh, Moses do? He had Moses write, write it on a stone or on a tablet, and it was published upon the earth. And what, we, what did he raise up when he opened the seals to for us to get this knowledge? Because he didn't just give it to us to know it. We had to go in here off the tablets and read it. So in a way, he did that anyway. For his, because that was his pleasure to do it. For his holy name's sake. Not because he needed us. He never needed us. So, uh, yeah. O house of Israel, but for my, my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether ye went. So the most I ain't doing it for us, man. He's doing it for his name's sake. His holy, his separate name's sake. 
says, uh, and I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know it, uh, so like, shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord power, when I shall be sanctified in you before your their eyes. That's right, man. So the heathen's gonna know, they're gonna know that that name, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, man, is, is, is that is that powerful, holy, and separate name, man. When, when the Most High, through the Spirit of Yahweh Shai, man, puts the Spirit on his men, hey, and they start furthering and bringing this place down, man. That's when they gonna know the power of the Most High's name. When he sanctifies his name through us. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, and from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations thou shalt find no means, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee their trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Right, man. That's how you see our people, man. Fear of heart, scared to go out in the streets, man. Niggas out here scared of death, man. What you talking about? Fell in the eyes, man. They can't see clearly out here, man. They don't know what the hell is going on, man. Our people don't know what's going on, man. Our people are blind, man. Spiritually and mentally blind out here, man. Basically, when they were blocking us, because we fell off. Anyway, let me keep it. It says, uh, let me back up to, uh, 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And that's like it said in the other scripture when we took off, when we served other gods, right? It says, um, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, said, the, said Yahweh, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Hey, so, so, that, that's a, you know, what's the song? Now you're talking about the deliverance, man. That's the main way. That the heathen is going to know the power of the Most High's name, man, and who knew the Most High's name. When they see the elect being beamed up and saved. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the one I was thinking about. That's the one I was thinking about. I was trying to put it in the book. Basically, this is, uh, this is the Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. That's why you see the men of the Lord all around the world prophesying on the streets, man, in public, telling them about the downfall of their uh, uh, society, man. Telling this white man he about to go into slavery, man. Right after the captivity of this white man. It take the spirit of the Most High to move a man to do that, man. That's right. It take the spirit of the Most High to move an abundance of men to do that, man. In different locations. Some men going by themselves, man. Right. That takes the spirit of the Lord to do that, man. The spirit of Yahweh Shai got to be on you and in you. We weren't given a spirit of fear. That's right. We were given the spirit of the Most High. That's right. Which is love. What's love? Keeping the commandments, man. One of the commandments is to get your ass out there and teach. That's right. It says, uh, uh, then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. That's right, man. You don't see no account of Jake's labors out here, man. All, the, all this shit is Jake's labors, man. That's right. But yeah, he don't benefit from none of it, man. It says, uh, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Hey, why are they going to be troubled with terrible fear, man? Because for one, those missiles are going to be coming down. For two, they're going to see chariots, so-called UFOs, flooding the sky. And they're going to be amazed at the strangeness of the salvation. Because it's going to be chariots flooding the sky, but not 
mainly that is because of the people that's going to be beamed up into those chariots right. being delivered from the nuclear destruction. Right? Right. There's going to be a bunch of thousands of thousands of, of uh, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. young men, the ones that they was thinking was thugs, man. The ones that they was thinking was crazy and, lo and losers, man. Uh, conspiracy theorists, man. That's why the salvation is going to be so strange. Because our people nowadays, man, when they, if they was to look up at salvation, man, they'll think a white Jesus is going to be coming on the cloud with a rainbow around the game. It's going to be a bunch of, yeah. Of, yeah. 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 Be a bunch of white people floating to, up to the sky, man. They don't yeah. even imagine no black people floating to the sky. Because that's man. the brainwashing that they put on you with this image. This is how they deceived you. Yeah, our with this image. The white Jesus. They, and then they, they can't, they, they're so brainwashed with this image of white Jesus that they can't get this out of their mind. That if, if they, when they see you, how some of them gonna turn and fight against him. Some of our own people gonna do it as well. To see that, that, that how is a black man, that who you call Jesus a black man? No, no, I, I, need, I don't trust him, I need white Jesus. That's when, that's when the white man gonna definitely triple his fear, man. Yeah, well he's, cause he gonna know that it's the Lord, man. Right. He gonna know that it's the person this world calls Jesus Christ, and he gonna see him as an angry black man. Hey, he gonna have flashbacks of slavery. And there's only our people that don't know that he's an angry black man. The rest of these nations know, especially this white man. He knows. This white man he knows. He, he, know he knows. Here, white man. He knows it's written right there. But that just shows you how far off and how, like the brother said earlier, how uh, how 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 good they've gotten. How professional and what's the word that they mastered? How they've mastered the art of deception, the art of brainwashing. But you don't even think to question what they what they give you. You just take it like it's gold. Like they didn't just have your people fucked up for centuries. You said never trust thy enemy. What do you say? Never, never trust, trust thy enemy. Thy enemy because just as just as iron rusted, so shall he so so shall he, man. Right. Back in it it says uh Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 2, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they looked for. And they shall, re and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. That's right, because hey, all these people have us in derision, man. All these people that walk by scoffing, man, that be online scoffing, watching, they got the men of the Lord in the prison, man. That's right. They don't look at the men of the Lord as men of the Lord. This is he, and this was he, whom we have sometimes in the prison, and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. That's right, man. They count our lives back. Says, uh, how was he numbered among the children of the Most High, and his lot is among the saints? Therefore, we have erred from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness has now shined unto us, and the sun of righteousness rose down upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts uh, where we lay no way. But as the way of the Lord, we have not known it. That's right, man, because most of our people, they don't know the way of the Most High, man. They think they do, man. All our people, God bless. How you doing today, brother? Oh, God bless your sister, man. That don't mean shit, man. That don't mean a goddamn thing, man. Not only that, man, you speak the curses upon that person, because you don't even know what God you're saying it in, man. You're saying it in Satan. Any blessings from Satan is cursed. We receiving the blessings from Satan right now, man. That's right. Everything that he was put on us up to do, he's doing. We can't. We cursed right now, man. All of, and, and if you look at, if you if we go back into um into Esau's blessing, which is the adversary of Jacob, you go back into his blessings. Everything that he that he was blessed with, he's giving us now. It's his it's his rulership. That means he gets to set the laws. He gets to set the, 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 um, the bounds of how this world will work. All the destruction, that, and that's all he's ever known. The son of perdition, he's known that. That he just gives up destruction. And that's his blessing, that's how he's gonna live well. That was his blessing. Um, yeah, something like that. Uh, 
Isaiah 30 and 1. Woe to the Go to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. That's right, man. Our, our people take counsel in men. Our people take counsel in false pastors, man, because they, they, uh, they, they, they dress like that. They got a nice car because they look prosperous and stuff. Like or you got our people that take counsel from wicked-ass niggas, man, like these rappers and shit. Entertainers and shit, yeah. Yeah, entertainers, man. They take counsel on their music, man. Not even knowing that that same entertainer is talking shit about your broke ass, nigga. Yeah. It was funny, you rap his lyrics like you the one like with the money. living the life, man. Yeah, like you the one, you're aspiring in a negative way, but you're aspiring to be what he is. That shit kill me, man. You see niggas driving down the street, niggas just as broke as the next nigga walking, man, because he can barely pay his car note in the first fucking place. Right. The nigga that's catching the bus probably got more money than him. Cause he ain't got to pay it out for all that bullshit. Right. Nigga was driving down the street rapping the song and shit, man. Look at the nigga walking and seeing the whole crazy broke ass nigga like you. You probably broke to him, man. Right. That show you how simple our people are, man. That show you how easily this music influenced our people. Not knowing the one that wrote the music got way more money, and it's not. And it's for it's for those with that amount of money that got them tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's worthless anyway, because they're still poor in the spirit, you know, that in another be, sense. That shit is worthless because it's a fucking American dollar anyway. So Not too many of these rappers are even smart enough to, to invest in money. foreign foreign money, man. But, but, foreign currency. But you see what the Mos is doing. That Eurozone is damn near worthless now. It's, it's down there bankrupt. They're having trouble. They're already telling you with the Cypress thing that that's what they're going to do over there. Yeah, they're just gonna rape your money, so you don't know what to do with it. The really? most high is doing it's a lot. Go ahead. No, go, no, go ahead. I said the most high is doing that, so so there's nowhere to run but to him. The really? only money is the riches of this of this world. Really, they shut down all paper currency. Right. They shut uh, any paper currency. They shut it down because they want so, you yeah, to take the, that the euro, chip, the yen, the, the, the U.S. dollar. The dinar never came out. Anyway, back in it says, uh, and that cover with the covering, but none of my spirit, that they may err sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth. Because if you remember back when, when, uh, when Joseph went with the, uh, with Egypt and Isaac told him, well, we need to go to Egypt and try to get something because of this famine that's going on. Most High sanctioned it because he knew Joseph was there, and that they would be reunited. You know, so that was a, it was a good purpose for them to go down there during that that famine. You know, to, to do that. But but now these pastors don't give you that. They they, they just tell you now trust in this in this fucking society, trust in this white man, it's okay. Trust in white Jesus, it's okay. Yeah, that's that's how our people go down to Egypt, man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and use this covering, man. They use the covering of America, man. That's right thinking that this whole holy and free place, you know, is so special, you know, and, and not, to, not to get sidetracked, but why else on my mind real quick, bro? No, I'm a holy, I'm a holy, I'm a holy, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a holy. That's, that's going to take us another level. And uh, have not asked in my mouth to pick the shadows the spirit of and the spirit of Pharaoh and to trust the shadow of Egypt. And, and the way you, you, you strengthen Pharaoh and trust in the spirit of, of, of Egypt, trust in the, uh, in the strength of Egypt, in the shadow of Egypt, is by following these laws, and, and, and not even the laws, but following the, um, the ways of this land, by trying to, trying to go to college and, and have this American dream, by working and, and, and putting all your time and effort into these jobs that ain't profiting you. You want to know how these motherfuckers strengthen Pharaoh, man? Ask how many of these black people love Obama. Man. That's right. Especially do you, do, you, do you like Barack Obama? No, he takes too much money on that that, That's the only reason why? I, I didn't vote, so. That's the only reason why I want to say. But I mean, you know, I mean, that's an honest answer. <laughs> At least you know that. Because a lot of people still want to give him another he, he gave me a free cell phone. And he gave me a free you cell see phone. That that video? He gave me a free cell phone. <laughs> he, he, he gave me some stimulus. Yeah, some people are so blindly 
following this dude, you know, that they trust in, in this Pharaoh so much that, that he's that he's break robbing and murdering you. In your own face. He said motherfuckers love this nigga so much, I bet you ain't even take the time to look up what the first word, what the first his first name. Barack. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Barack Hussein Obama. Like, it wasn't that just what we was fighting? Didn't he just go, didn't, didn't uh, the president before him just take down people with those same names? Same yeah, he got a terrorist, man. Yeah, he sure do. And he ran terror on the American people. Akbar Barack Hussein Obama. <laughs> Akbar Barack Hussein. Man. You know, and you guys don't even know the, the meaning of that name. You guys don't, don't understand nothing. You don't, you don't research and look up nothing. But how to do the stuff? You know, y'all probably still researching these new the Harlem Shake and whatever the hell else is new out there. Y'all people, y'all, y'all still researching bullshit like that. Researching what Jimmy Kimmel told you to do on YouTube. Go, go give your kids a, a bad gift. I'm being pissed me off with that shit. I'm in here saying, look, I'm trying to find about how the dollar's collapsing and, and, uh, and, and Cyprus, how they're robbing the money in the bank. My being works at a bank. I'm trying to show her to, 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 uh, to, to give her some knowledge to go into the bank and talk about, about what a bank holiday is. And she said, no, 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 forget that. Good old Jimmy Kimmel tells parents to, to give a, a stupid gift for the kids, to tell the kids that there is no sound, some bullshit. It's, it's, it's just, it just comes so fucking foul. And what I don't say, I say, oh, now you change it? Uh, now you put that bullshit on the other day. I don't want to, I didn't care to listen to that. I didn't care about that. You want that shit to be played. You don't want to hear no weapons. This thing ain't for women either, man. It's not for your woman. If you, if you don't know that you're going to lose your woman in, in this thing, if you, when you come into it, then you've got another thing coming, man. You're going to lose everything. You're fucking waking up. If, if, you, if, you, if you believe that, that your woman is your soulmate and she's everything, and she's your, your com- complete, op- you know, she, she completes you and everything that she's supposed to be in life, then you've got another thing coming. Then, what, then that, a matter of fact, man, if your woman completes you, man, kill yourself, man. Let me let me get it, bro, because it's, it's even better when the, when the scriptures say. We said it, but it's better when the scriptures say. Right here. Um, where is it at? I can see if you gave me the bitch up saying she can beat you. Right. But if you really believe in that shit, man, kill yourself. Because that, that's what these pastors tell you to do. They tell you to love your wife, and they tell you to you know they don't they tell you to big her up basically. They're not telling you to wait up to deal with her. They tell you to pick her up, but treat her as the, your woman is a queen. Treat her as a queen. When I ain't seen the scripture that said that your woman was a queen. You gotta be 50-50, brother. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Let me get this. Uh, Sirach 26 and 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. There are no righteous women walking around here. You will not find one. Who can find a virtuous woman? You're not going to find her because she's put away for a righteous man already, doing the things she's supposed to, out of sight, as a woman's supposed to be. She's not out there to be gamed up. Really, you ain't gonna find no righteous woman, period, man. You gonna find no. one that's, that's gonna that deal. you can deal with, man. Right. You gonna find one that you content with at this time, man. There ain't no fucking righteous bitch out here, man. Nigga, if your woman wasn't no fucking virgin when you met her, that bitch ain't righteous, man. Fair right. point blank. There's no ways around that. Fuck out of here, man. And, and, for, and, for, and, and this is how you know. Well, I think I got a good woman. Well, this is how you know. Is, is, she, is, she, trying to, is she a person? Is she a person? Is she trying to make sure that you in these scriptures and sincerity and truth? Trying to keep you strong in this thing? Trying to have you and hold you down? Is she, is she, is she got back talk? Does she have all those things that's going on? Because if not, you ain't got one. And that pretty much is saying all of Jake, all the Jake women right now. All you Hispanic. Uh, Native American and so-called Negro women, that just named all of y'all. That's all you know is back talk. That's all you got the spirit of just rebellion on you. That's it. Let me read it again. So the wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So that shows you when you get these women, because all these women are wicked, when you get these women, that just proves that you wicked yourself. That you still got wickedness in you. When you when you when you separate yourself from them, is when you have a chance to be righteous. Your brother called me out on it the other day. So anytime you try to be cool with your woman, she gonna have you going off in some way, shape, or form. 
not doing what you're supposed to do. Anytime you're trying to be cool in the house and keep peace in your house, this woman's going to make sure that you, you're doing bullshit and you're not going to be studying right. That's exactly what happened to me. Because I, I, I done went through it, bro. I done went through it, too. I done went through it. With the three different like, women. Hey, hey the water y'all about shooting y'all huh. side, he done separated me and my being, man. He done got that bitch the fuck up out of there, man. You won't do that for me, it's, you know. And, it's, and really, bro, it's like, it's lovely now, man. It's really lovely now. My son don't be up uh, all into all the bullshit that he used to be into because his moms ain't around, man. Mm -hmm. Moms do come around, bro. It be it be tension so thick you can cut that shit with a motherfucking butter knife. Bro. That's how thick the tension be. So, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. A dishonest, a dishonest woman can tempt his shame, but an honest woman will re re reverence her husband. How many of you women actually reverence your husband? Sincerely and in truth, not just a pacifying, but sincerely. I had to bring out the all subjection to mine the other day. Like, this ain't all subjection. I'm gonna tell you something, and before I can even finish it, you cut me off to say some bullshit, to be objective about it, to be argumentative about it. That's not subjection. I tell her, shut the hell up and listen to what the fuck I'm trying to tell you. Just shut up. You're not telling me nothing that I don't that I don't know or need to know. When I want your opinion, I'm trying to give you my when I want your opinion, I will ask for it. And I don't want it. Because I'm gonna read the Bible before I even dare. That's the point. Your and she knows that. I'm not gonna consider her opinion at all. She ain't got nothing good for this thing at all. Not for me, in it. No, but to make sure my 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 bill is hot. The only time when you consider a woman's opinion, you tell me how she wants to fuck. That's, that's it. I won't dog you tonight, baby. Yeah, that's, that's, thank you. I'll give that's, you some that, That's it. Even that's then, it. man, you still do what you want to do in the bedroom. I, and, I, and, and what's funny is, mine is, is at a level where she, she do just enough to where I can't get rid of her. The most I have her where she's just doing enough where I can't be separated from her. Where I got to keep her and deal with the bullshit. You know, so, so as a heads up to you men trying to come into this thing, that got women that, that's, that's dealing like that, you got a deal. If they ain't going off completely and done something like adultery or something or something crazy where you can put them away, right, you can't put them away. You got a deal. But if they give you that out, put their ass away and, and come into the righteousness, man, and then deal with women from that point on in a, in a better perspective. Or if she try to, if she continue to be hindering you from, from, from this word, man. Yeah. That's right. Shut That's that another bitch one. down fast. That's right. It says, uh, "Be not ashamed when it concerns thy soul." Watch that shit, man. Yeah. Straight up. I have to learn the hard way. My, my, it was funny in that same conversation. My said, like, I said, you know what? It's funny how every time I'm not studying at the level I should be, it's because I'm, I'm trying to be cool with you, and be up here, being cool up in the house. He said, "Oh, so I figured that was coming out. You damn right, that's coming out." <laughs> because that's what it is. Hey. Well, fine, we should go back to now talking and say, I'm already there. Yeah, hey, and if she figured that was coming out, that means she knows. She already knew. That means she knows what's going on. She knows what's going on. Could it go from me in there not want to talk, me in there reading, to her, hey, want to go? No, I don't want to go nowhere. I'm in here starting to read. I'm up here trying to upload these videos. I'm doing something. I'm busy. We go from that to that. We can go eat. Okay, yeah, let's you know, let's go take the kids to the movies, and then you know, sit like that. That keeps me from hindering me with this word. No, you just go do it. Go take the kids and do whatever y'all want to do. I don't have to partake in anything. I want some family time, man. Fuck family time. The family time I want is in the chariots, man. When my family's up in the chariots, that's the family time I want. That's when gonna be that real family time. That's what my concern is. It ain't about making sure the kids look. She back when my kids love me more than her, or appreciate me more than her. Because I do little things that matter. And I teach them show them righteousness. It's the main thing. And they, and they see it in the It's the main thing. You got something? It's uh, Isaiah 32 and 9. Come. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. A lot of you are at ease because you don't see or have no understanding of what's about to happen to you. You don't see, you just think everything's getting better because you, you, all you know is my check been coming on time, 
my stats been coming on time. My, you know, everything is, is still the way it was. You still got all these benefits. You got men coming in after you, doing whatever they can to try to get with you. Everything looks good for you. It says, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. The vintage shall fail. All this system is going to collapse. All this vintage system that, that bigs you women up is going to collapse. Men are going to run through you women. When I mean run through, I don't mean run through as far as sex. The sex that will come to you will be in the form of rape. And the rape that's coming to you will not be pleasurable for you. You will not enjoy that. You will get run through for a man can bust one, release the steam of uh, after war. Just because he, he wants a little pleasure. Then he'll probably kill you. And most of you won't even get that. You're just going to be killed. No if, ands, or buts about that. It's just gonna shut you down. It's you. Shut this bitch head off. She's good for nothing. Go ahead, bro. It says, uh, many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. Matter of fact, lean up a little bit slightly. All right. It's uh, Isaiah 32 and 9. Isaiah 32 and 9. Yeah, 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 Isaiah 32 you don't care that if you do have a man that's out here teaching this word in sincerity and, and, and in truth, that he's trying to instruct you to do the righteous things that's out here. Some of you are, but in general, you're not doing it. Go ahead. You're being Seven. careless. Uh, give ear unto my speech. Listen up. Many years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. Many years will you be troubled careless women because you're not preparing yourself to deal with it in this time. You're not, you're not referencing your husband to be able to deal with it. You're not referencing your husband to be able to deal with the shit that's coming. So you will be troubled. That's being careless, not, not referencing your husband at this time. You know your bitch ain't no good. She walking with you with a slut strap. Man, <laughs> Jake, man. Hey, the, the shame is though, niggas be bowing down to these nothing ass bitches, man. That's the, that's the sad part. Niggas one. be really bowing down to nothing ass bitches. Man. I don't even bow down to my mom no more. When I when I when I came into this truth and really became a man, cause before that I had a mama's boy spirit on me. But when I when I grew up through this word, that's not I don't mean like 18 or 13 or whatever year you're supposed to grow up. I'm talking about when I grew up because of the knowledge of what made me a man with these scriptures. When I did that, there was, there's not another woman I bow down to. The only thing close is wisdom, the woman of wisdom. It's all that I, I surrender to. Every other woman that's walking around this flesh ain't good for shit, man. Nothing. That's a box. That's about it. This is half I'm rubbing my back. I'm rubbing my back. And most of them, you will have to hear something to ask. For asking for something like that. Yeah, you better this, uh, Isaiah 32 and 10. Many days shall you be troubled, you careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. The gathering will not come. It's not going to get better. All this, oh, I'm about all to get that, my nursing certificate. Yeah, all, all that. that mm -hmm. so like all that EBT, because we write, we write by the welfare office. Huh. Man. And the majority of motherfuckers that you see, Waiting in that long ass line is black and Mexican bitches, man. Right. So that's why the most high saying rise up. Ye women, and you ain't, you ain't even women, you, you bitches that are at ease, man. Right. Because that vintage gonna fail, man. Ain't gonna be no more welfare soon, man. Ain't gonna be no more EBT. No more right. financial aid for you to go to school and learn this bullshit ass education that America pushes, man. Right. Ain't gonna be none of that shit no more, man. You women gonna have to actually go out there, get off the lazy ass and work. We're not trying to live off the goddamn kids and shit, man. Off the welfare. So it says, uh, verse 11, Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. And let me say this, a lot of women, um, don't, that trembling is, is basically being uncomfortable. A lot of you women don't want to be uncomfortable. You don't want to see the reality of what's going on, so you, so you, you hide that. And, and, and comfort and what you consider comfort. Well, I can eat, or well, I can go out and do this and do that, 
But you, instead of girding up their loins and being careful about what you do and what you say and how you act, you, you, because that's comfortable to you. Because society makes you comfortable with those things. Isaiah 32 and 11. Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled at ease. That was the point I was doing. At ease. Because it's easy to be to be um, to be comfortable in this society for you women. Because society makes you comfortable. Because they yeah, come, come. they make women uh, uh, they give women all these extra benefits. They make sure women are, are bigged up by men. They make men chase women in this society. But when you, but it's telling you to tremble, to, to wake up, and to, and to act like a real woman, and to reverence your husband, and to do the thing that you're supposed to be doing out here, and to see what, what your husband's trying to tell you, or just to see what society's showing you is about to happen to this place. Because this place is about to get real bad. And if you ain't, a, and you ain't trying to be righteous in some way, shape, or form to a man that's got this understanding, then, then there's nothing you can do but eat a missile. Get ran through, get tortured, and, and eat a missile. There's nothing else for you. A lot of the women that's going to be saved is going to be saved. They're going to come in during the tribulation time. Man. That's right. And they're seeking that, that, uh, that shelter from the storm, man. That's right. A lot of it is going to be bitches that never really dealt with one particular man like that on, on a solid note, man. Right. Like you bitches that's with, these, with, with the men of the Lord when they come into it and y'all fall out, man. It's going to be those same bitches that y'all was talking about, man. That's going to be getting saved. Because they knew how to humble themselves and shut the fuck up when that time came. That's right. Isaiah 13. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna start at 13 and 11. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. A lot of you women are proud. A lot of you women are proud. That's why you have no problem running up in front of the, the middle of the Lord talking shit. Oh, go get a job, go get a nigga, your hairline fucked up and all that, not knowing that you're doing something righteous. Not knowing that they're supposed to shut the hell up. And listen or go on or move on. You know? And these, and these, it says, for I will punish the world for their evil. Punishing the world, that's what you need to tremble at. Like you was reading in Isaiah 32. You need to be trembling at that because that's coming. He's going to punish the world. That's what the Lord said. So I, for, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. Man, you really, you want to know it's a part of that evil now? Especially in the so-called white man society, man. It's uplifting the woman to a level that she's not supposed to be held at. Man. That's a part of that evil and a part of that wickedness. That's, that's what sets most of the confusion and rebelliousness in the household, man. It says, uh, it's roughly paraphrased, it's like the righteousness of a father buildeth a house, but the dishonor, the dishonor of a mother tearing through this man, what, what is that? Yeah, no, it is the apartment, right? I didn't paraphrase that good enough, now I gotta look it up. So hey, well that's what we do, bro. Go on and get it. Oh yeah, the, the one I had. Was this one right here that goes with what you were saying? Jeremiah 33 and 22. Let me get it right quick. It says, oh, damn, you. 30, 31 and 22 says, Jeremiah 31 and 22 says, uh, And how, uh, uh, how long will thou go about, O oh, thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. You know, and that, that goes along with the brother was just saying. That is a new thing, man. Because even back during our slavery times, man, women knew that men was 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 that power, man. Right. But that was at the same time, the time when they started taking that power to the man. Think how much power a man is gonna have if he gets castrated, man, to his wife. He can't dig her down. Not only that, he can't provide her with seed. Not only that, the white man is now raping this woman. And the man can't do nothing about it. 
Yeah. That's that power being taken away. Right? But that's something that just became me, man. If you watch the movie Django, uh, even even the sellout ass nigga, what was that nigga name? Uh, uh, Steven, man. He had them bitches in check, man. Them bitches tripled at his question. Yeah. You see that nigga why, why, making why me scared? a friend. You making me a friend. He makes me scared. Yeah, 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 the men still have the power seat. The men always got it. But the society pushes that doctrine out there that, that a woman has more rights. That, that, she, that she has either. She can call 911. She can do whatever the hell she wants. Talk shit. Kick a man out. Treat him like shit. And then not, not nothing come upon her. Hey, no that's, reproach. That's wicked for somebody else to interfere with your household. Sure is. You're supposed to be able to humble that woman any way possible. You know, any way necessary, so to speak. In your household to keep order in your household. Does the scripture tell you to marvel not if your daughter trespass against thee? And uh, what does it say? Keep her in straightly. The scripture tell you not to be uh, uh, embarrassed to make a wicked servant size bleed. That's right. And the, the word woman means servant. It means female servant because the word man means servant. That's right. You know, uh, this is what I found about too. It's uh, Sirach 3 and 11. For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father. Right. And the mother in dishonor is a reproach to her so children. That's, that's the name that you carry down. So that's how you were known if you were a, of a good family. You know, and in, 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 in today's times, I'm not going by my father's or my grandfather's last name. It's about this Israel, Yasharala, our forefathers. Our forefathers. That's why we say that did this thing. Amawan the Paz, Ban Ipar, Aparium, Ban Yasharala. Son of Ephraim, you know, son of Israel. That's right. Or son of Judah, son of Israel. Right. That, that's what it, that's what that's the forefathers of righteousness that's passed down. Remember? It says, uh, it says, uh Sirach 3 and 11. I hit my beard with this shit. It says, uh, oh, I'm gonna start at 9. It says, in Sirach 3 and 9, for the blessing of the Father establishes, this is the one I was looking for, for the blessing of the Father establishes the houses of children, but the curse of the mother rooteth out foundations. <laughs> is that not every black household where there's a mother and a father in it? The woman trying to cut your legs from up under you in the household to uphold some power? I don't let that shit slide at all in my house. She's still trying, don't get me wrong, she's still trying to do it. And I can't win every little battle because of circumstance. But for the most part, I don't let none of that shit slide. I call her out on every little thing that go on that I'm not happy with in the household. For her to correct me. She, she, she say, I'm over her head too much, I don't give a damn. Then act right. And, uh, Car buried in his house. He just gonna ride up and down the street, got nowhere to go. Sleep in his car, man. He smoke once and, and drink forties in his car. Walk out the house and smoke a blunt in his car and shit. Right, nowhere to go. Niggas is silly, man. If he even got a fucking place in his house. Says uh all oh, that floss in Alright, so this is uh Isaiah three and twelve. It says uh that for my people, children are their oppressors. Right. Yeah, women rule over them. Children are their oppressors. Yeah, they that are younger than I have me a division. Yeah. When, he mean, when he means younger, man, he doesn't mean like literally after. He means those who are insignificant. Oh, yeah, white man, brother, they are younger than they, Yeah, they are a younger race of people, but mainly yeah. insignificant. Because yeah. yeah. this so-called white man is insignificant. Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans really insignificant to the Most High. The Most High has really no care for the so-called white man. He made him as a vessel to dishonor. He says, uh, "Children will over me, and uh, women. Uh, what was it? Children are oppressors, and women will over me." And really, when you look at our people, man, that's the that's a hundred percent truth, man. It's the women that's ruling the house. It's the women that's telling the man. I was just trying to see what you guys were doing with the uh, camera. 
word out with the camera, right? And edify people on the internet as well as out here amongst people walking around. You guys making pictures, video, or it's a video. Got like a card or a flyer or something? Or uh, what's your yeah. YouTube channel or something? Uh, you got a Basically, um, with the Jim Mesa Boston City. Yeah, it's a Jim Mesa Boston City. Uh, YouTube, uh, and then, uh, YouTube, I don't know how to do it. It's on YouTube. I don't know how to get um, the URL, but then it's just called. Basically, so you know what, uh, what we're doing out here is, is we're out here putting the word, the truth, the word of the most high. The truth, the truth Bible, the truth and sincerity out here. And these are the people. This is their biblical names on the right right here, on your left, and on the right, what they're called today. These are the children of God. This is the uh, Bible called Israel. You know what I mean? From Israel, the Bible. Matter of fact, I'm going to read it up the Zonovan's Compact Bible Dictionary for you about uh, Israel. so-called Negroes, Benjamin so-called West Indians, Levi's the Haitians, and then the Northern Kingdom, which is the Simeon is the Dominicans, Zebulon, Guatemala, the Panamanians, uh, Ephraim is the Puerto Ricans, Manasseh is the Cubans, Gad is the North American Indians, Reuben is the Seminole Indians, Natali is the Argentine, Chilean, Chileans, Asher is the Colombian to Uruguayans, uh, and Issachar so-called Mexicans. shall not round the corners of your head, neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. That's right there. <laughs> right there. Yeah. 28 is another one who says, uh, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor prints print any mark upon you. I am the Lord. You know, tattoos and brands and all that stuff. Yeah, some of us have them. We did before we knew. Basically, we're warning our people about that image ain't right, that this dude ain't right, he's deceiving the people, Obama. 
But that's actually a man called the so-called chief sandwich. The man called she's a poor chin. Uh son of the Alex uh Rodrigo Board Jr. Six Pope of Rome. You know what I'm saying? But he painted because he he was a pope. He thought he was God and his son would be who? Jesus, right? So he painted his son as the image of Jesus. That's the image that most people think of him. We 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 um pushing out there that people know that that's not the true image of the Lord, that he didn't look like that. Pedophile. Yeah. Incest. Incest. Homosexual. What's his name? Cesare. 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 I think so, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was about him and his, his, and his family. That was the original, the first crime family. That's the name of Borgia's original crime family. The first crime family. This is uh, the first two are actual websites you go on to. The uh, other ones are just YouTube channels with my name, my number, and my email. Okay. You guys designed the website right here? No, no, that's the, the first one is the website from the elders, and the other one is from the Rose from Chicago. Okay. So, you got ours on the team? Yeah, it's done. But, uh, yeah, man, starting uh, next week, every Sunday, man. Going to be out here because at first, man, for our schedule, we kind of had to hop around from kind of different day to day. But the most I blessed me to where I could get my weekends off now. So every Sunday, man, me and his brother, or just me, or all three of them, we got another brother too. Yeah. Going to be out here every Sunday for a schedule a little set time. So if you want to come out, man, right, right. Or just hit me up, text so. me or something, man. I'll let you know when you come out. Or all right, you got uh, numbers on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my line. All right, bet. Sorry, I have to get that here. All right. All right. Okay. Well, start back at the top of it. it says, Isaiah 3 and 12. That's for my people. Children are their oppressors. So Paul like man, that's the children, right? And they're our oppressors, right? And women rule over them. And as you see, man, in every Jake house, damn near every Jake household, man, women are the rulers. Women is the one calling the shots. Why? Because nowadays, man, women are the are the main breadwinners. Right? He saw got this society built up to where a woman could get a good job. That's why you got so many so-called deadbeat dads, dads that ain't doing nothing, dads that ain't working. If you took all these women out the workforce, man, you'd be able to put all the men back in the workforce. You'll have steady households. Man. Right. You'll have households with a stern foundation of them. Man. You'll have more kids in order. But that's what they do, man. They allow these women to get up in the workforce, man. Firing all these men out. Half these women get popped in the workforce by their bosses and shit, man. So what that does is it takes that steady foundation out of the household, man. It takes that instruction and that rod of correction out of the household. Because they have these women, man, they don't correct their kids. They just beat them. And don't even... Uh, yeah, let me, let me add on to that, brother. Because what, what happens, and, and even in my household, I have to be on my BM about that. Like, you can't just tell them, no, don't do that, but you have to explain to them why not. And then, once you tell them why not to do it, and they know not to do it, now you have to show them what to do. But, but you know, most, most women, yeah, you have to actually teach them what to do at that point. Like, when my kids, they be, they be in the house too long sometimes, watch the TV, they be get out of control, they start bouncing around too much. You know, jumping on furniture, like, hey, cut, cut that shit out. Yeah, you can tell them to stop, but guess what else you gotta do? You gotta show them what to do. You gotta give them an outlet to let that energy out. So I take my kids to the park to play. That's how you let that out in a constructive manner. You can't, you can't tell them, no, go sit down and watch TV. That's what got them riled up in the first place. You can't just say, no, don't do it. You gotta show them how to do it. And the scriptures do that for us as well. They don't just tell them what to do and what not to do. They show us how to do it and why to do it. So we have a full understanding. You, that's how you teach. And the elders of GMS have been doing that as well. Thoroughly. Real quick, bro, let, me, let me jump over here about the order of the household. Um, I'm going to start at Corinthians 11 and 1. It says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. That's right, man. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, or Yahweh Shah, or the anointed, right? And the head of the woman is the man. That's plain, man. That really doesn't even need to be explained. 
The head of every man is Yahweh Shai, the head of every woman is the man. Plain right. and simple. And the head of the of, of, uh, of the Lord is the Most High God. And the head of Yahweh Shai, who is the head of the man, which is the head of the woman, That's is right. the Most High Power Himself. Man. He's the head of all. That's right. And that and that's and that's about the, the order of it because, like the brother was saying, society has it out of order to where the household's messed up, and that goes all the way back to Willie Lynch. Willie Lynch kept that like that. You know, when I was watching um, the, the Aaron Russo, he was talking about how the people, uh, how the women's lib movement, right? He said what that did, that took, that took uh, the man, the woman out of the household from raising the children and sent the kids to school now, to where they're they're indoctrinating the children and what they want them to know. That's exactly what it did. And then that breaks up. Now you got the breadwinner argument going on. You know, when it didn't have to be that way. And then now, a lot of these so-called men, nowadays, they can't handle the reverse role that's going on in these households. They can handle it, man. They can't handle the reverse role and still keep that dominant position. Right. That's what it is. That is. Because the women won't allow it. They can't, yeah. They, 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 the women won't allow it. And, 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 Dudes is too scared to to, to lead their ass, man. Right. Because they too used to being taken care of by that bitch, man. You know, and, and if and if you're in a situation like that, man, you need this book to stabilize you. You know, some brothers have a have a have a have a situation to where they, they it has to be that way, where they have to be at the house raising the kids and they women have to be out making the bread. But guess what? When you do that, when you take care of that household, that that's not far off of how nature's supposed to be anyway. Because what did it say back in Who Can Fight a Butcher's Woman in Proverbs? The, that the brother mentioned that their husband amongst the elders in the gates teaching or, or, or in the tents learning the word for the household and the woman's out there working with her hands willingly, selling tapestries and all sorts of stuff, making merchandise out there. Yeah, that's just for the working woman. You know, that's the question. You see that, that situation. You know, and, and, and but the man's still dominant. Because in, in uh, Sirach, he says when he sitteth among the elders, he'll sigh bitterly if the woman is, uh, is full of, uh, what did say she was? Full of reproach, you gonna say? She calls him and sigh bitterly. Here you go right here, it says, uh, yeah, I'm gonna start at, uh, I'm gonna start at 16. Yeah, this is uh, Deuteronomy, oh, that's Sirach, that's Sirach. Sirach 25. And 16, I have rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. The wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband sit among and shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. Hey, that's how it goes, man. That's how it is even when, like, the BM call, man. I'll be with the bros or something. I'll be going like, what the fuck does this bitch want? You don't even want to hear that bitch's voice, man. Exactly. Just like, man, you, you see just even niggas in the world, man, out on the porch and shit with their bros, smoking, whatever the fuck they doing, you know, all type of bullshit. Drinking or whatever. Hey, bitch, call their ass, Dante! Fuck. You know, son, what the fuck this bitch want? What? Exactly real shit. Hey, you don't ask me, what? bring your ass in the house in here and see what the fuck I want. Hey, but you know why he bows down to that? Because that's the same way his mom used to talk. Now, let it exactly. That's why. And it, it's, it's funny, like I was saying a minute ago, before I grew up, I kind of had a mom and boy spit on And I'm talking about being like, you're going to have to man up. And, you know, and basically uh, step up and have some, some spirit about you. You know, I was worldly. I didn't know. So she picked up that spirit. And it seemed like as soon as she picked the spirit up the, the way I, I was used to it from my mom, I came into the truth and like, I ain't dealing with that shit no more. No. Like, no, that, you don't have to learn how to, she didn't have to say that she was in order before, or, you know, had the right way, but that, but it was kind of a natural movement for her to, to see how my mom kind of uh, uh, ran the household, so she tried to pick that up, to try to keep me. As soon as she did that, I was like, fuck that. I don't one, want that. That's one thing I always do. I, 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 I was thinking, bro, I, I, I used to be against my mom. You know, she was single mom or whatever. But at the same time, once I started getting females and shit, 
I rebelled against that little when they try to use certain authority. I'm always rebelled. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the authority that was never the issue. The authority. Now even that just nigga, me explaining myself to this. Man, fuck that right. shit. Right. Better. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. For my people, with, uh, they which lead thee call thee to marry. It's a multitude of people that, that, lead, man, that lead our people. Man. Yeah, from the so-called white man. Yeah. How, how he leads us through all this, uh, through all his um, uh, subliminal messages, man. Yeah. Like I said, man, he mastered on how to trick you. Master on how to control you niggas' minds, man. That's right. one way this white man leads us, man. Then you got our people who's put in a so-called higher seat in this society, man, that lead our people to straight to sell drugs, man, uh, uh, fuck other dudes, women, to, to, uh, to love this world, man, love this money. Yep. Then who else do you got inside the household leading us, man? You got the women leading us, man, because the majority of... Uh, of um, Negro, Latino, and Native American households, man, are single parents, man, which is usually the mother. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one, 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 what, one main saying a lot of females say, y'all uh, niggas ain't shit. Well, who raised these not shit niggas, man? Yeah. Who was raising these mm -hmm. ain't shit niggas? Yeah. Women. So you wonder why niggas ain't shit because niggas ain't men. Niggas got a feminine spirit on them, man. Right. Niggas ain't men out here no more. Man. Not getting their loins up. Man. Yeah, all these niggas is too nasty to And another uh, leader is who? One that's supposed to be leading us in the right way, but it's not the so-called pastors, man. Yeah. They're not leading us right. They, they try to look for that scripture. All, all, man, all the leaders of our people, man, if, if, if they ain't the elders on down and those who's following the orders of the elders, man, they, you know, they causing you to hurt, man. That's right. Okay, it says, um, and destroy the ways of thy paths. That's exactly what they do. They destroy, they don't, they don't even make a way for you to know the, the real name of the Heavenly Father. They don't even make a way for you to have to uh, to try to live in righteousness. They don't, they don't, your, your mom or your woman, the woman in your household that runs it, she just will cook you pork chops. And there's nothing else for you to eat. There's nothing for you to do. Because she don't know, so she just going to give you whatever she thinks is best for you. Without putting no, no thought or energy into, into why pork is so cheap. You know, and why is that on every Jake's household table? Or why, or why shrimp is such a delicious delicacy, you know, amongst our people? Because that's, because think about it. Just on something that to think about how society goes. When you take a woman out, when you're in the world, you take a woman out, where they like to you go? Know, they want to have something like crab legs and shrimp and, and lobster. And they say that shit like that's a classy ass place. Stinks and nothing classy about no red lobster, no goddamn outback. Well, nothing classy about the place, man. Hey, and I have yet to meet a woman in the nation say, let's go to Roof Chris or something like that. Right. Don't know shit about no white man. The roof Chris ain't even too upscale like that, man. It's expensive, but it's not. It's not that that place to be where these so-called people with money really be going, man. Yeah, you know, yeah I, I got something to do with it. Um, let me go. I'm gonna start at 16, jump down to 15, and read through 17. It says, uh, "This is Isaiah 9 and 16. For the leaders of this people caused them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed." That's right, man. So. People who's following these uh, all these false pastors, man, all these leaders that that's not grounded and backed by these scriptures, man, they gonna get destroyed, man, right along with the leaders, man. They just gonna, it's plain and simple, man. They gonna get destroyed, man. So good. I'll jump down to 15. It says, matter of fact, I'm gonna start up at 14. It says. Therefore, the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and brush, in one day. That's right, so he said, the Mosiah is going to cut from Israel, the head and the tail, man, and the 
the, the, the people on top, man, the people on the bottom. The first and the last in the society, man. He's gonna cut them all off in one day, man. So the ancient and the honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. So for the leaders of this people, for the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall they have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer. That's why you see constant niggas getting put to death out here, man. Even these little kids that these people think is innocent bystanders. Right, right. These little kids ain't no goddamn innocent bystanders, man. They got killed for a reason, man. Right. They got put to death for a reason. I got a quick precept, uh, Joe 4 and 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent. Job said, whoever perish being innocent, man. Who got put to death out here and was really innocent, man? Every time you see a little nigga get put to death, man, their parents want to get on TV crying and shit like they was the best kid in the world, man. That was a wicked ass little nigga. Yeah, That's why the Martin. Yeah. 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 That little nigga got shot down in the street the way he did, man. Even them little kids in Sandy Hook, man. Exactly. Them little kids deserve death, so they got put to death, man. According to right to like We got that uh, Samuel, man. The Lord killeth the nigga. Uh, I'm going to grab right now for them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, um. Uh, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, or, or where were the righteous cut off? Basically, they got put to death in righteousness. Not because that they were at school and they were getting bad grades or whatever you think is righteousness or not righteousness. If they got put to death for the reasons that the most high felt they should be put to death for. You never know what they did in their past life, man. Exactly. Now this is uh, 1 Samuel, First Samuel 2 and 6. The Lord killeth and maketh the lie. That's right, man. So the most high is the one who takes lives and brings lives. Man. Right. There ain't no nigga with no gun, man. Don't be fearing no nigga with no fucking pistol out here, man, because it's not up to him whether he gonna take your life or not. Man. That's all up to the most high, man. <laughs> That's all up to the most high whether them little kids at Sandy Hook got killed. If it was up to that man, all them little kids would got put to death. So it's tell, it shows you it's not up to the That's up to, that's up to the most high. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. He maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. Basically the most high can show everything. Everything that goes on, the most sides of the top side. So every, so for every one is a hypocrite and an evildoer. And every mouth speaketh folly. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And it says, and every mouth speaketh folly, man. If you hear anything in a nigga's conversation, man, it's not about shit, man. Niggas don't never talk about shit, man. Niggas will never talk about shit. Right. Niggas always talk about some bitch, some fake money that they trying to make, man. Some rims they about to put on some bullshit ass car, man. Some clothes they trying to get. Some bitch they trying to fuck. Man. Niggas conversation is never talking about nothing. Even when they even when they try to go deep and talk about the so-called Illuminati and shit like that, man. Niggas still ain't talking about nothing because they have no knowledge behind it, man. They only recycle what they've heard someone else yeah, say. niggas ain't got no wisdom, man. If you want to hear what a nigga talking about, turn on the rap music, man. Because all the nigga talk about is what the fuck you hear in rap songs, man. Exactly right. And there's something else. Uh, that was it today. So, back in Isaiah 13, yeah, I'm going to go back up to 11. Isaiah 13, 11. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. That's right, man. Who's the proud and the terrible, man? That's the so-called white man. So-called white man is the proud and the terrible. So the Most High said he's going to cause that arrogance to cease, man. And he's going to lay low the haughtiness of the so-called white man. That means he's about to bring the society down, man. 
the rulership of the so-called white man is at its end. It's at its peak. That's why you see all these things happening around the country, man. That's why they're talking about the dollar collapse and they're kind of crashing in itself, man. Um, it says, uh, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the gold, golden wedge of all fear. That's right, man, because why? What's, what's precious, man? What's the treasures of the Lord? It's the wisdom of the Holy Scriptures. So what, what man is that that's going to be more precious than fine gold? A man that has the knowledge and wisdom of these scriptures, man. Because when shit hits the fan, when a dollar ain't worth nothing, when gas is skyrocketing, you can't drive your car, when ain't no food in your goddamn house and ain't no food on the store shelves, man, when there ain't no electricity in the house, man, then what the fuck you gonna do, man? You was too busy trying to learn how to duggy rather than trying to shoot a gun and train for combat, man. You look at niggas, man. Niggas is too busy trying to learn how to fucking dance and how to pick up the next bitch. Rather than being like these white folks, man. White folks got their kids learning how to shoot AR-15s at 13 years old, man. Show you how lost and docile you niggas are out here, man. Show you how simple you niggas are, man. You niggas ain't ready for war like these white folks is ready for war, man. When you race wars kick off, man, you niggas is gonna get fucked up in that first wave, man. That first wave of race wars, you niggas gonna be getting put to death at a high rate, man. It's going to be a high casualty rate in the ghetto, man. Right. That's just the race war. That's not even the, uh, the martial law. That's just the basic race war parts of it. That's that, that, the, that the ordinary cracker is going to put you to That's the beginning death. of the race war. And it ain't even going to be these young crackers, man. These young crackers are going to be hiding out in the woods, man. There's going to be these old crackers that's not about to leave their house for nothing. Yep. That's going to be shooting you with 20, 30 year old hunting rifles, man. Mm -hmm. well, you can't even bust nothing in plain view with a nine. Let me use this example. Remember um, the, movie that, uh, the, the Book of Eli? Remember when they was going off and in the middle of the desert, there was that one house. They went up in that one house and the old people were shooting and booted, man. And there was old people down there, right? That goes to show you what, what really gonna happen. The old people can't, can't run off to the city, but they held down their house, though. They ain't talking about it, man. But they were still alive, though. All they them gonna years be later. taking niggas off. Yeah. All them years later, they were still alive making it happen out there. Still have, still have bullets. Still have, uh, you know, electric. Well, why? Because a white man learned how to make bullets. Right. They had traps. That's what they doing, but know how you trap? You yeah, talking yeah, yeah. with drugs. Niggas learn how to make crack, the white man learn yeah. how to make bullets. Niggas learn how to how to mix lean, the white man learn how to mix gunpowder. The white man know how to uh, how to mix chemicals and how to hunt. I'm telling you, man. Y'all don't know. And Niggas know how to hunt for another nigga's bitch. That's what the white man knows how to do. How to, how to, how to, how to game up a bitch with, with, with words, another man's woman with words. He ain't even doing it right, sweetie. You gotta do it like this. He ain't got money. That ain't no game. You getting that a bitch already warmed up, nigga. Yeah. The society, the way, the way Jake is, yeah, exactly, bro. Jake is so wicked now, man. Jake don't know righteousness. Jake wouldn't know righteousness if you were standing in front of the swap that you're doing wickedness at. Jake wouldn't know righteousness if you slapped the shit out to you in your face, man. That's right. I'm just saying, like, we stand out here week after week, all the time. I mean, we've been out here enough that we I just see the same faces. Come through here. You know, there's still some new faces that come through here, but majority of the, new, the old faces that you see up in here, they, they know we out here. They know what we out here doing. Some of them have stopped and asked questions. And I know they pass it along the ones like, oh, they over there teaching the Bible. What they doing with the camera and the now they're teaching the Bible? You know, they run up and down this boulevard, left and right, turn with the music turned up, trying to get turned up, not knowing the real way to get turned up is to get these nuns and wisdom. That's how you get turned up. I God, man. I, I, it's a lot, it's a lot. I don't swear, man. I was just a figure of speech. It's so good time, man. Man, I hate these fucking things. I hate looking at you niggas, man. I hate looking at every person in this goddamn place, man. But place, it just needs to go, man. This place needs to be over. Try. It just, it just, and, and know what? I, 
in a loving way, bro. And I love my brothers, man. That, that all of you brothers out there that put this word of sincerity into I love y'all. But I hate seeing y'all too, man. Because every time I look at y'all, it reminds me of the affliction that we got to go through. And all the vexation we go through still being here in America. Still dealing with this society. You know, I see the anguish on your face and the, and the, and the fatigue. Not that you that you getting tired of it or doing the work, but just that you that all of this that you got to weigh on you every day. It weighs on you every day being here. The air stinks. The water is nasty. The food don't taste right. The vegetables don't even give you nutrients. All this shit you got to deal with it in society, the concrete you walk on hurts your, hurts your bones. All this that we deal with, I'm tired of seeing my brothers go through this shit, man. I'm tired of going through it. And I'm tired of you niggas, man, that keep wanting this shit to continue to go on. You, you have the idea of the white man. You want his society to go on forever. And you're doing nothing but preparing yourselves and your families for it to continue to go on. So when the shit hits the fan and the shit all crumbles right before your eyes and a moment's notice, it's going it's to, it's um, what's the word? It's going to engulf you like a, like a flame. It's going to come upon you like a thief in the night and spoil you. Not like spoiling a baby like you think that's a, that's a good thing. Spoil me, it's going to destroy you. Mentally, physically, and spiritually. You're going to be completely destroyed by fire. And you're going to feel it. It ain't like getting shot in the head. By famine, you're going to starve to death. That's the worst death you can get. You, it's going to happen to you people. You don't get raped where you at. You're going to desire to die in cake. Men and women, that's what this homosexuality pushes out. You know, don't think women, yeah, don't even think just women gonna get raped. You men gonna get raped too, you pussy ass men. Y'all gonna get raped too. Too many homosexuals out here but for it not to happen. Look at that. It's like you women ain't gonna be wearing skirts and dresses in the day. You niggas ain't gonna be wearing skinny jeans in the day. Right, you just gonna be get ripped off. Ran into. Y'all, y'all, and then well, the sad part about it, this white man puts all this shit in the movies to alert the rest of his people what's going on. I was watching that uh, Cat Apocalypse, the Cat Williams thing, where he starts putting the beans on every, on everybody. You know, he said, uh, white people don't have to have a meeting about it because it's in their best interest. They already know what to do. They know the drill. They don't have to go, oh, well, we should do this. They already know what they need to do. Willie Liz laid out what needed to be done hundreds of years ago. It's easy what they need to do. They just need to execute the plan. You keep executing the plan, it's gonna go to plan. But you just don't even know their plan or have a plan of your own. Oh, I'ma just get money and then, what? who gonna sell you something when your money is worthless? What you gonna buy with worthless money? You ain't got no skill and no trade. What you gonna trade? What you gonna offer? You're about to trade your, your girl, you're about to trade your daughter. She ain't gonna bend and walk out on you because you ain't gonna be worth nothing. I ain't no girl. You're to trade your little daughter. Like, like in that movie, uh, uh, that on the road. The wife gave up and walked off. She just walked off, took the coat off. It's freezing outside. She took the coat, the big bubble coat off, and just walked out into the darkness. She got, probably didn't, she get, got probably didn't get a mile away and got ran through. Probably got boxed up and, and eaten. All in one, in, in one uh, group of people. You never know what was really going on, but, but, but all that's gonna happen to you. All that's gonna happen to you, Jake's out there. All you uh, uh, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's what's gonna happen to you. We out here trying to warn you before this shit happens to you. Hey, start getting your guns ready. Hey, start getting your health up to, to escape this pestilence. Hey, beware of the mark of the beast chip that they want to implant into you. Hey, start fasting so you know so your body can handle it and build up your spirituality. Hey, get into this Bible. We are trying to give you all this all this stuff for you, to, uh, all this knowledge and wisdom, so you can build yourself up and be better. But you ain't gonna hear. The scripture said you wasn't going here, but I tell you not going here.
Uh, uh, two, and, uh, Ezekiel 2 and two and two and one. And he said to me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. You know, because no somebody laying down or, or is gonna take whatever comes his way. You know, somebody sitting down gotta take whatever he can get. But if you stand up, you ready to, to get what you need to get. You ready to really receive something. That's also talking about coming out here. And standing out in front of people and pushing his word out. And, and, and the spirit continued to me. When he spake unto me, he set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. Uh, they and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. Says, uh, <clears throat> for they are impudent children and stiff hearted. The word they're impudent for you that don't know is let me go. Is uh, stiff faced and hard hearted sons. Uh, anyway, impudent meaning you you, know, you have no potency. You you work you're worthless. Worthless and stiff hearted. He said, I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. Because we telling you, we out here telling you before. We out here telling you before, we're saying it before it happens, so you can prepare for it, and it don't have to happen to you that way. It's gonna happen. Matter of fact. <laughs> Grab Ezekiel 33 and 34. Okay. You can go straight to the point of 33. Because we out here telling you before it happens. And some of you, I ah, ain't, whatever. That's if, if it ain't going to happen. No, it's going to happen. Go ahead it says uh, Ezekiel 33 and 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. And lo, it will come. Don't doubt. Every other prophecy has come to pass. That this, that this book is talked about. Whether you understood it come to pass or not, it has come to pass already, and they will continue to come to pass. This is, uh, keep going, keep going. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Come. Now let me get this real quick. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Basically what they came to do, and what the, the purpose of, of the law and the prophets, right? I am not come to, to destroy, but to fulfill. Point. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. And part of that law is the prophecies. Part of the law is the prophecies that have to come to pass. Not one jot or one tittle of the prophecies or the law will, um, Will, will not come to pass. They're all going to happen, whether you like it or not. We're out here trying to tell you that it's going to happen and how to prepare for it happening. We're reading to you what's going to happen and how it's going to happen and how to prepare for it. And so you still will forbear what we say. All right, six, back in Ezekiel uh, 2 and 6, it says, uh, And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. In fact, let me jump down to a better. Uh, Seven. And, uh, seven. and thou shalt speak my words unto them whether they will hear or whether they will forbear for they are most rebellious but, but thou son of man hear what I say unto thee be not, be not thou rebellious like the rebellious house open thy mouth and eat that I give thee and when I look behold and hand was sent unto me and lo, a roll of a book was therein. Talking about the scripture, the Holy Bible, the 1611 verse. The whole thing with the Apocrypha in it. Not just the Psalms and the Proverbs and the New Testament, the whole Bible. It says, uh, and he spread 
it before me and it was written. Yeah, let me go up. So, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Right, Bad things, man. Lamentations, mourning, and woe. To all signs of, of bad times, man. Right. Woe is destruction. And the lament is, is crying. Cry out. And mourning is to, to be sad. That doesn't sound like love everybody and prosper in this kingdom of, 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 of the white man. That's not what that's talking about. We're talking about lamentation, crying, and mourning and being sad and, and destruction. Whoa. That's what's written in this book. That's what we come out here to prepare you how to escape. That's what we're out here for, to, to teach you how to escape from those, those terrible things that's coming. Uh, three and one. Moreover, he said unto me, Eat, son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So that's that's what the prophets do, man. The prophets digest his word, man, and go and spew it out in the streets, man. Right. That's what they do, man. They take it down and digest it and get the understanding and study on it, man. They get the taste of it, the sweet and the bitter, and they go and they spew it out, man. For others to digest. It's almost like a bird when she feeds her kids, man. She take it, she eat it, then she spit it out in the kids' mouth for them to digest it, man. So they can get it. Let's get that again. I got a scripture from you. That's what she said there. This is, uh, Can I say something? No. Nah, uh, I'm right. just showing, bro. That's good. Well, you gotta know what love is, though, man. You gotta know who Christ is and what Christ means and what's his real name. Christ is his real name. Emotional. There's no O's or U's in the alphabet. You can't be the O's. Uh, you gotta call it. You're about to go through the motions of the O's. Get a proper scripture. The name is going to be given to dead in faith. That's actually going to leave on that name. A lot of people, when they get that name, they just get it and keep it moving, man. So it's like it was just a waste of time to tell them about it. What's your nationality? A bunch of things. What's your father? My dad. Your dad's name. His father, too. He's a native American. Native American. That's what you see. He's from the tribe of Seattle, right here. Native American. He's from the tribe of Seattle. So you were actually an Israelite, man. Stem from one of the twelve tribes of Israel. That Native American thing that was just put on the by by during the beginning of slavery. And that's basically the slavery. Order. They came over, took the land, killed ninety percent of the indigenous population on this land. Went over there to the, to the north of Africa, western and northern uh, hemisphere of Africa. Then took the Negroes over there, and they started spreading the Latinos and Native Americans all the way from Africa to 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 uh, islands. Hispaniola, that's this right here, man. The transatlantic slave trade right here, man. Going back and forth. And that's the Native American Indian thing also. Did you know that the word Indian means savage? That's what they that's the label they put on us to to, to um to um to demonize us. Uh, yeah, you know, there's a belt of scribes, what we call the scribes of people who record this, uh, uh, the accounts and things of these they experience. There's a council of people saying, even Christopher Columbus himself said, that the Native Americans and the people down there in Mexico, the indigenous people down there were the closest people to peace with, yeah. in tune with, in tune with uh, nature, mm -hmm. harmonized with each other. Most most civilized people that they've ever ran into. Most beautiful people that they ever ran into. Not only that, said they came with major comparisons with the people in the That's right. So that also said that in that book, Black Indian. Though I think the Native Americans were friends with them. That's a part of the Same with the Hispanics. They were drunk. They called them French. Yeah. And they have friends with the French. French. That's a part of the Same people. Ancient laws, man. Let me get that in the... Uh...
want to get the first one or you want to get the first one? Okay, it says, uh, this is uh, Proverbs 30 and 4. Who have ascended up into heaven or descended? So who, who ascended up into heaven and descended? Who went up to the heavens and also came right back down to the earth? That's the son of the most high. Right. He's the only one that's did that something. Like that. Who has gathered up, who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in the garment? Who, who has established all the ends of the earth? Because so is the elements. Because that's how the earth and the universe was created by the people. Like, you know, the different things got to be done. You know, the element table, the seed, the top, and all that stuff. That's how the creation was created. That's why it's called H2O. Hydrogen 2 parts. Hydrogen and 2 parts. Hydrogen that's the element of the CO2, carbon, two oxygen, air, you know, so that's basically the element of the everything on earth is created from those, that element table. True. That's what I tell people, even the things you eat, has exactly. zinc, magnesium, that's what you're made of. Exactly. We came from dirt. Dirt has minerals. That's why your nourish, yeah. that's why your nourishment comes from the earth living in these pharmaceuticals. You want real medicine, go get the natural earth, go get some tiny air, go get some oregano. That's go get what some I do. Some I don't, I don't uh, take any medicine. Yeah, you're supposed to. Put on some clothes, goddammit. <laughs> what is his name? And what is his son's name if thou canst tell? The scriptures ask me, what's the most I mean? What's his son's name if you can tell? I mean, it's not going to be given there. It's only a selected few people who are really supposed to even have, those, have that name. So that's why the majority of people call him God. Jesus. Because yeah. they don't know him. And, and, and really, yeah, that's the title. Jesus means Savior, Christ means anointed God, means power, ruler, and Jesus. A lot. And we're not going to be. Or, uh, you know, just like they say, uh, you know, that's not his real name because you got to go, you got to figure out the name of Alpha Works and you know how to spread it. That was the first one. So there's no O's or E's in the name of Alpha Works. Or E's. Yeah, E's. So how can his name be pronounced in Alpha Or Yeshua, or Yahweh, or Yahweh. Acts 26 and 14. And when we were all fallen, to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecute or why persecutest thou me? It is hard for you to keep against the place. So he said, you know who Saul is, right? Changed the name of Paul when I was blinded. Right, right. When they used to persecute the church, he said he heard in the Hebrew tongue, not the Latin tongue, not the Greek tongue, not the English tongue. He heard in the Hebrew tongue. Go ahead. He says, and I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, so, whom thou persecute. Jesus, we know, is Latin. He said, He said, I am Jesus. So, in the Hebrew, I am is Howard. I am is Messiah. Uh, 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 what is, what is I am in Hebrew? Ashaya, Shor, Ahaya. I am, so he said, Ahaya, Yahweh Shah. Oh, okay. Because so his name. name is Yahweh Shah. So he said, I am Jesus. Ahaya is Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah means he is delivered. Or he is very Because he was to be, he has an only note. It means like a name problem. So he was to be the Savior of Israel, only Israel. Because only Israel can seek repentance. Because the Lord, the Lord only, Deuteronomy 76, the Lord only deals with one nation. He only deals with the nation of Israel. He doesn't deal with any other nation on the face of the earth. You got so-called white people, you got so-called Chinese people, so-called Japanese, you got so-called Africans, Arabs. The Lord doesn't care about you. You have to be free. It's not just one people, man. It's broken down into multitudes of nations. Into 12 different nations. It's broken down, it's broken down into people. West India, it's like the Jamaicans and the Belize. It's broken down into Haitians, Dominicans, Guatemalans, and Panama, Puerto Ricans, and Cubans. 
That's a lot of people. If you put all these people together, we're as the sands of the sea. That's the same prophecy that he told Abraham his seed was going to be. So if you put all our people together, then we're a multitude of people, bro. Deuteronomy uh, 76 says, uh, For thou art a holy people, and we're a holy people. Exactly. Because really, we're supposed to be separated from other nations. We're not supposed to dwell amongst other nations. We're not supposed to act like other nations. We're not supposed to partake in the things that other nations do, like Christmas, Halloween, yeah, Easter. That's all, we're not supposed that's to do that, man. You see, uh, yeah, exactly. That's all um, We don't celebrate any holidays. Yeah, we're supposed to celebrate the high holy days of the Bible, like the Passover, the Lord of the Temple. Sabbath, which is uh, Saturday. fresh fruits, but not, nah, nah. Sabbath is actually, it starts on a, uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to that real fast. It's just like, you know, like two more scriptures. It says, oh, we'll get to the Sabbath. It says, uh, for thou art in holy people, unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Oh, it says, the Lord power chosen, but that's what God means. Power. The Lord power chose Israel to be a special people unto himself. Now let's say you got six pairs of shoes, right? But you got one special pair that you really like. That's going to be above all the rest of your shoes in there, you know? That's the same thing with Israel. Most high, because we created 18 different nations. But it's only one nation that's special to you. It's only one nation that he cares about. And he's going to try to prolong the life of as long as he can. You feel me? Yeah. It says, uh, special people unto himself above all the people. Uh, uh, Above all people that are upon the face of the so earth. said the nation of Israel is above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Not equal to, not under, not side by side. He said above all people on the face of the earth. That's enough. Yeah, let me this um, Romans 9 and 1 I say the truth in Christ I lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart for I wish I could myself that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren my kinsmen according to the flesh the Paul said he missed that he himself can with me what uh, the person in this world called Jesus Christ was Sacrificing everything for who? For my kinsmen, the kinsmen, according to the flesh. According to the flesh, who's your kinsmen according to your flesh? Those from your family, those from your same nation. So he said he wished he could go through what the Lord went through for his kinsmen, for his nation, his people according to the flesh. Go ahead. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? For who to pertain to adoption? You go to church, they say the Gentiles were adopted in. He's telling you that Israelites were adopted in meaning that those Gentiles that were adopted in were Israelites as well. But they just lost their parents. They forgot who they were. They started partaking in the past. Exactly. They started acting like the heathens, so they started becoming the heathens. They started calling themselves by the heathens. to the heathens go. Just like nowadays, man. You got to get wrong. They act just like the rest of the nations. Chatted all up and shit, man. We didn't do that shit, man. That was Africans and Polynesians doing all that shit. Getting their full body tatted up, man. That shit looks disgusting, man. But niggas is sick. Our body is a temple. It's supposed to. Yeah, it's like supposed to be a canvas. Like if, if you guys built a mansion, you wouldn't just tag up that mansion. Exactly. Right exactly. Well, niggas is simple. They probably would, man. Yeah. They probably That's write their names in their hood and they live yeah. mama names all over, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. It says, uh, and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. So this said Israel possesses the adoption, the glory, the covenant, the service, and the law and the promises of the Most High. Meaning everything that was given and promised to the Most High was given and promised to Israel. Israel only. I got one more. Thing. Yeah, I got another one. Uh, this is Acts uh, 2 and 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And now what they say in John 3, 16, but they say the whole world can come to, to, uh, to the Lord, right? But this says here, ye men of Israel, so that's who he's talking to. Right? It says whosoever shall call upon. Now it says whosoever, now John 3, 16 says, 
whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have the everlasting life. This one says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He men of Israel. Right. Is, whosoever one of you men of Israel shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not whosoever in this whole world. Because when you look up the word world in John 3.16, it goes back to cosmos, which means a harmonious arrangement or government. The Lord's government is the nation of Israel. What does the government do? The government puts in a, a constitution of laws, legislation for people to abide by and live by. It's a group of people. Yeah, get uh, the statutes that the Lord was given to Israel. It's back in Deuteronomy. Now, the Lord gave, yeah, God, the Lord gave Israel laws, statutes, and commandments, 613 of them. That's what Moses went to Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights to get down the laws. You think it took them 40 days and 40 nights to get down 10 commandments? No, man, it was 613 laws that Moses got up there. That's why it took them so long. And it equals to nine. And he fasted that long, too. So, now... Moses was up there getting uh, the law, statutes, and commandments. Now, the way it was supposed to go was Israel was supposed to get those laws, commandments, learn them, and follow them, and teach them to the rest of the nation. That's the government. So when this talks about the world in John 3.16, that's talking about Israel, the world of Israel. Like they have the, the world of sports, the world of, you know, the same, same type of thing. What's that, Isaiah 40? You know what it says? That's, that's like the best scripture. I just, I just had to say 40 and 17. We got a world without me. I'm getting yeah, I'm good. So, uh, I think we're going to leave, but you know, I appreciate it. We're going to be out here every Sunday, man. I'm sure we're going to be out here. That's all we're doing. We're going to be out here. 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 I'm not. I've been out long time. You've been out here for like three hours right now. Not most of them, but food. Food and plant. You get to do it. You never know. We might do it. We might not never get this one. It's just stuck. Wow. It's written on our hearts. Is it? It is. your heart? My heart. It's my conscience. My soul. It's my heart. My heart. My heart. My heart. But uh, I appreciate this because our family on my mom's side they were runaway slaves. Yeah. They were they grew up on the plantations in Louisiana. Yeah, my, my grandma did too, man. Yeah. My grandma grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana. Mine too. Shreveport. <clears throat> Worked in the in the so called free plantations. Yeah. Where the free so called free slaves. Yeah. But they couldn't leave because they were bound to that uh, to that work. Yeah, they were bound to Just that like land, people today. Yeah. Like like you know, all these people think they're free now, but they, they can't leave. You can't just, you can't just uh, go across the ocean, build a boat, go across the ocean. You got all kinds of companies. You can't even drive a car without the people. That's not free. They work with ID and social security. Let alone on the part of, of having to work just to have something to be able to be. Who has, who has enough money to be able to just, well, I'm going to just do a four fifth and just start running across the country. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put a record until I feel until I'm tired. You know, nobody's able to do that. You know, you, you're bound by the work that you have to do. <laughs> about what we, what we do to, you know, you stand into it and it's, and it's here for you to gain it, you know? Everything you ask for, he, he heard you and he, and he asked you to. Because not everybody will walk past here and have enough um, wisdom to stop and to, and to gather the knowledge from it and then do something. You need to save your soul. That's what we're here for. We're not just here just to, to tell people we're here so souls can be saved, have the opportunity to be saved. Wisdom is kind of like if you get some Versace cologne, that smells appealing. 
But that's our wisdom. That's what drew me over. But it's like to, to those who are perishing, meaning those like how you guys said, those who are partaking in the heathens. It, it's like stinking. It's like to them. It's like, it's, it's like to them. It's like, it's, it's, this is dumbness. It's foolish, yeah. It's foolish, man. That's why I said, please, the most high, please, the most high, please, the most high, please, the but you can't possibly with none of without this, you can't possibly. Just like you said, like it's a sweet smell, man. So that's only to sell people. But at the same time, this you know, we we have plenty of people come up here. Oh, oh no no, it's just 30 yeah, give us a good God as one. I got you know, say God bless you, do your thing, you know that man. Hey, they never return. Uh, uh, this is Ezekiel 33, 31. And they come unto thee as the people coming, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear my words, and they will not be For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart is going after their covetousness. Right, man. A lot of people show up there. It's all beautiful, it's a very lovely voice, but they won't do it. You know, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's, it's sweet in the mouth when you hear about what we're talking about, the, the, the beautiful knowledge that's coming out. But but this life and this society is not easy as better. So this is uh, Revelations 10 and 9. It says, and I went unto wait, and I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, 
take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. Right, man, hey. But really, they going through the bitterness of life, man. You can see it on them, man. Yeah. Them little jakes are struggling right there, man. They ain't yeah. living in no nice household, man. Them little jakes are struggling. They just know how to live decent enough to make it look like they ain't dirt broke, man. Right? That's Jake what Jake at. learned though. Fake yeah. it till you make it, man. Exactly. That's one of the main tricks Jake learned. Yeah, straight from Jake. You, so yeah, man. They live in that bitterness, man. But once you come into this truth, it's gonna get even more bitter. Because the most high is gonna try that faith, man. The most high is gonna go through it. Everything's gonna pick up just because all of a sudden you come into the truth, you know the name of the most high, man. It's gonna get it's harder. For you, yeah. It's gonna get harder for you. Because you got restrictions you gotta go by, man. Yeah. Not only you got restrictions you gotta go by, those restrictions restrict you from associating with certain people. Yeah. Yeah. Which actually takes away a lot of the connections and plugs, or, you know, plugs, but a lot of the connections and, and, and bridge ways that you have, that you had in your life, man. Right. Now you start to develop gaps in your life that you need to go out and fill on your own, man. That's right. You don't well, get handouts no more. You don't get it. Free rise no more, man. You gotta make shit happen on your own through the spirit of Yahweh Shai that he keep you humble, keep you grounded, and keep you strong in that, man. That's right. And, 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 and part of that, that situation is also that, is that you, a lot of those people that will be cut out of your life, but some of them is your family. And you gotta deal with that. Your, your so-called loved ones, and I, I see it that way, because you're gonna see what the real love is all about. Are they gonna love you the same? When you when you when you out there pushing the burn and you ain't partaking in the wickedness that you used to with them, yeah. you know, are they gonna turn their back on you? I done had time after time I've got close family members that turn their back. I'm at the point now where I don't give a shit, man. It, it makes life easy. That's one less person I gotta worry about later. Yeah. I didn't I didn't give you what I what I done received to give. If you take it, cool, I'll give it, you know. We we can be closer all day. But, but, that's how y'all simple Jake is, man. His shoes untied, so I saw it. You don't want, he got too much pride to stop and tie his shoes. And if I'm telling you, that's his fault. I don't give a fuck. Nigga, you simple, man. You running from a bus stop with a Gucci belt on. Nigga, what do you look like? Really? You fluorescent shoelaces. Anyway. Anyway. I'm telling you, man, that's why niggas need to get killed, man, with, with, with a, 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 a hastiness. Please. I'm tired of looking at this, man. But it shall, back in uh, Revelations 10, out of the 9, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the book, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey, but as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Right, man. Hey, you, once you first get a taste of this, man, hey, it's, it's real sweet to you, man, knowing that you're about to rule in the next life to come, knowing that you can possibly get spiritual powers, knowing that you're the children of the Lord, man, that the Lord loves you, that the Lord look like you, man. But once you start getting into it, man, and you start seeing the different avenues, man, you got to really labor in this thing, man. Not only that, you got to start going through the affliction of it. You really get into the historical accounts, man. Not just knowing that y'all was in slavery under the devil, man, but seeing the actions of the slavery, man. You yeah. start actually researching the slavery, seeing pictures of men lynched with their dicks cut off and burnt to death, man. Yeah. Torn apart by dogs, man. That shit gets bitter, man. Ima imagine this. Imagine your pregnant woman, right? You and her walking, someone jump off, beat you over the head, right? And they holding you down and making you watch them cut your woman's stomach open and taking the baby out and stomping that shit or throwing it right into the alligator uh, pit to pull the alligator out of his alligator bait. After they violently raped her. After they violently raped your pregnant woman. You know, you walking with your little baby, they pick, they, they kill you or not even kill you, they hold you because they made you watch a lot of this shit. They didn't just do it, they actually made you see it and then they killed you. In these, in these horrible ways. They took your baby by the feet and bashed their head up against the brick wall, up, up against the stone. Your baby says you have to watch that. That's bitterness when you understand what you went through. That's bitterness to know what you're gonna have to go through to get out of this. Hey, you know what make it even more bitter? Once you understand reincarnation and realize that that shit happened to your ass. Happened to you. It happened. You've been there. 
and, and, the, and the most high, he, he calls to remembrance just a little bit to some brothers, man, to be able to kind of, to, whether it's through dreams or whatever, but you can kind of relive some of this stuff. Like, as I read some of this stuff that, that went on, I kind of like feel like I went back into some of them. Like, I, I, can, I, can, I can imagine, so to speak, what, what, how, how it could have been played out. And Django does a lot of that for you. That's why we say, go see Django, man. If you ain't seen Django by now, buy the DVD. Red, red, uh, what is it? Red, if, if you, red, 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 if you ain't, red box, if red you box. ain't seen Django by now, yeah, you need to hurry and go watch that shit. If you've seen Django, you didn't hate the white man after that, then you need to kill yourself. Yeah, straight up. Or you need to find out if you really a cracker or not. Because, because you, you, you can't be in the right spirit of, of, of the most high or, or call your, you can't even be in the right spirit of a human being. You can't be a man. Right. You can't call yourself a man if you watch Django and just hate white people. That's right. And, and or, or at least go as deep as um as what's the uh, DiCaprio's I forgot his name, but DiCaprio, uh, DiCaprio, Candy. DiCaprio uh, Candy, Candy. I forgot his name. Yeah. So Candy. Yeah, whatever his name was, right? Basically, Candy. <coughs> Marcia Candy. Yeah. If you look, he didn't really want to be a, a a slaver like that, but he had to be. Because that was his lineage that was passed down to him. He didn't really enjoy it. He was actually cool with a lot of the slaves. His best woman was a slave. Like niggas. Yeah, he was he was into that. He was growing up, he grew up in the years after that where they was kind of like, well, they're not so bad people, they all right. Where their great grandfathers were the was the real hard slave drivers doing all, all of this lynching extra stuff. But they still had to keep that going because that was their routine and what they grew up after. That's the way life went. And if they didn't, it would throw the whole thing really, off. Really, I gotta research it too, man, because uh, as far as the role he played, he looked like he came from an elite family, man. And the elite family really didn't partake and get their hands dirty and all that shit. They didn't even call the slaves niggas. That was that, that uh, fucking hillbilly swamp cracker shit, man. The, uh, the brothers, was them brothers that yeah, the, the name. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. The, basically his enforcement, man. Right. That's what they asked for, man. He, he was above all that shit. And he, and even in the movie, he didn't have to go and do all of that. He asked Stephen to keep his slaves in order. Yeah, he had the nigga keep his slaves in order. That's right. Hey, the hey, one that raised him. He knew too, he was like, one, I always wondered, all the years I lived here and ran Candyland, why don't they just kill us? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't they just kill white? Because these white folks know, man, they would have been roused up, man. See, Jake, man, Jake is a docile sheep, man. Let me read, and then we can end up with this, bro. Matter of fact, we go with that last picture. This is uh, Ezekiel 3 and 14. It says, So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. Basically, you go in bitterness because you understand, if you have any understanding of this book, you understand what you got to come out here and do. How you going to be looked at. You're going to be um, demonized. You're going to be defamed. You're going to be on the bottom. You're going to be uh, all the things that are listed in 1 um, in, in, in Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I think that like 9 and 10th verse, something up in there. And all the things, I'm probably a little further down than that, but all the things, you're going to be buffeted and broken and, and not housed. And it, yeah, you're going to grab right there. You know, you're going to go through all those things, to, if, but for righteousness. That's how you're tried as gold is tried and, 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 and as silver, refined as, as silver. So, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 9. For I think that the Most High has set forth us, the apostles, last. Set us on the bottom. As it were appointed to death. As as because any situation could pop over, we can be put to death. Man, we're not like the Pope. We ain't got a bulletproof uh, mobile or nothing out here. We just men with no weapons and nothing, only just sword. The spirit of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit with the angels and kept around us. That's all we got. But for y'all that don't know or don't see, it looked like we just missed standing out here just talking shit. The Bible's around here. False prophets. Yeah. We got a shoe tied in the It says, uh, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. That's right. We are fools for Yahweh's sake. This is a foolish thing that we do. 
this is part of the foolishness, is the bitterness that, that comes with it. Because you in the world, you would never choose to do this. You know, I'm going to look like an asshole out here just because, you know, I think it's going to be cool. And when it don't look cool, that's when they all fall out. The weak mind to fall out when, when they realize it ain't cool what you're doing. It says, uh, we are fools for Yahweh's sake, but ye are wise in Yahweh's We are weak, but ye are strong. Right. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Right. Even until this present hour, we both hunger. We both hunger. We don't. We don't get to eat. And sit up there and eat till we, till we get just oh, be gluttonous. Yeah, we can't be gluttonous. We gotta save food for the next week. Right up. It says, uh, and thirst, and are naked and buffeted. Thirst for the word, man. You know, we, we, we thirst for righteousness. Not, not only do the regular water and drink, but we thirst for, for, for righteousness. To see the most our people, we thirst for all these things. We hunger for it and we thirst for it as well. It says, uh, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor, Working with our own hands, uh -huh. being reviled, we bless. Being reviled, people hate us. Keep going, I gotta, I gotta being persecuted, we suffer. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. Right. <laughs> it's 1 Corinthians 1 and 27. But the Most High have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And the Most High have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are might. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath the Most High chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to things that are. Right. I got one. This is uh, Matthew 5, and I'm going to start at, at 3. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's right, man. So we out here mourning right now. But when that time of anguish and, and uh, tribulation comes, we're going to be comforted while all the rest of the people out here mourning. Right? Right. Crying to death out here. Right. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's right, man. Blessed are the lowly. Because they're the ones that's going to rise into power. Right. Like it said in the uh, first service, the second chapter. It says, uh, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's right, man. What we feel with, we feel with the wisdom and knowledge, man. We feel with righteousness. Man. It says, uh, seven, it says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That's right. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see power, or see the most high. Yeah, that's right, man. So it says, blessed are the pure in heart. Why? Because they're the ones that's going to see the most high, man. The salvation, man, they're the ones that's literally going to be able to see the most high and not die, man. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to have that uncorruptible body. Right. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall call, be called the children of the most high God. Right. And, and let's, let's be clear about that. Peacemakers. What kind of peacemakers are we? Are we? Because we, if we're not, like I said, the, the Lord come to, to kill and destroy. Um, um, what do I have this? How does that, does that go? The peacemakers, man. We got the gospel of peace. Yeah, that's that's the point. That's the difference. I don't want you to try to twist the word and say, "Oh, y'all talking all this violence and hatred." Well, that has to happen for there to be peace. This white man has to be taken down violently for there to be peace. It's like I said, these things must needs come to pass, but the kingdom of heaven. It's, it's the only way that there's going to be peace. The land can only be uh, the only the land that's been defiled by blood can only be cleansed by the blood that defiled it. You know it says, uh, it said, uh, "Blessed are are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." That's right, man. Who's going to be persecuted by for righteousness? Yeah, who's going to be persecuted for righteousness sake, man? If the one third on this side, man, is going to be persecuted, he's going through light affliction and everything like that, man. That's that but also, yeah, that's that but also, man, the elect that's going to get put to death, man, in those concentration camps. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely 
for my for my sake. That's right, man. So just like all these people be getting up on there scoffing down, talking all the elders and, and the, the different various camps of GMS, man. Y'all about to see me outside said, blessed are you when they do that, man. We're blessed in heaven when they do that, man. It says, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. That's right. They didn't speak well of the prophets of old, man. They didn't, they didn't speak nice to the prophets of old. They didn't love the prophets of old, man. They persecuted the prophets and put them to death, man, because they were speaking things that they, would, they didn't want to hear, man. So they was cussing their ass out. And why do you think they hung and killed the Lord? God. For the same reason, because he was a prophet out there telling them what they didn't want to hear. Uh, uh, telling you to correct yourself, to be right. You know? And, and, and the world hated him for it. He was reviled for that. It wasn't all love when he was on the scene. They didn't like him. He, he came out calling everybody out. Double honors to the elders of GMS and honors and salutations to all your brothers out there around the four corners of the world. Pushing this doctrine with one accord, with one sound mind, and one judgment, and sincerity and truth, man. Bar me out, Shalom.